Gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide on this 14th day of October 2016. We are now only 24 days out. I've really sat back and looked at the huge spectrum of news, and my analysis I know is dead on because it's so incredibly obvious. I'm sure that even mainline media knows this is a fact. They are trying to steal this election from the American people and from Donald Trump. Every metric shows it. You've got major algorithm companies, uh, you've got major professors, you've got major institutions that have never been wrong about elections saying Trump is the odds-on favorite. Then you've got mainstream media like the New York Times saying 80-something percent chance in our algorithm he's going to lose. And even when he's 15 points ahead, they'll just come out with a scandal and then claim that it's put him behind again when you actually go to the algorithms from even Google itself there's a story up on InfoWars.com that is so important to get out to everybody. And we're also going to add to this some of the past algorithms because it's not just one. Google Trends shows Internet users far more interested in WikiLeaks than Trump allegations at a level in some cases of 10 to 1. It's incredible. It's amazing. I mean, on the graph here, we've got areas where there's an interest Interest in the Trump sex scandal, the, the potty mouth scandal, of 4% with an interest at 100% being the benchmark for WikiLeaks. 100 versus 4. Hmm. So when I say 10 times, I, 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 I tend to average down with a guesstimation, but, but on average, I mean, we're talking 10 times. You can look at the graph for yourself. In fact, just eyeballing it, we should have a mathematician do it. It looks probably more than like 15 times on average. But he gets 20, 30, 40, 50,000, turns away 20,000, lines for two, three miles away like we saw in Austin, Texas when he was here a few months ago. Hillary can't even get 200 people on average. She has to go to city events or concerts or other things that already have thousands of people, and then she just gets up there and addresses it forcing herself into the public consciousness. So what's going to happen? They are organizing big time to steal this election. And I don't say that, you know, so that then people lose confidence and don't go out and vote. The answer is go out and vote and fight for the right of this representative republic. So we can also have eyes on the ground to illustrate, especially in battleground states, what's happening. And we're going to then fight for this election if there's evidence of theft. And it's already coming in in New York with the early voting. The head of New York elections is a Democrat saying it's total fraud. We played that just a few days ago. We should put a special report together with that. It's so incredible. Election fraud already happening. Evidence is coming in and early voting is the same thing in Florida. Democrats bragging there. We have the UN. We have the OECD's military intelligence corp of the EU coming in and saying they're going to run our elections. We have Homeland Security saying they're going to federalize the election? Who told you first? I did. I knew it was coming. Trump came out, exposed it. Then they came out and said there's no such thing as election fraud, but we've got to federalize everything because election fraud is such a giant threat by Donald Trump, the American people, and the Ruskies. Yep, elections official caught on video blasting de Blasio's ID program saying it lets dead people, illegals, you name it, vote. That's on screen for TV viewers. But it's not just that form of outside manipulation or election fraud. It's Donald Trump to claim Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim behind New York Times sex assault stories, Wall Street Journal. Well, of course he's behind it. Only 24 days left, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Now, we've seen top professors that have never been wrong about calling U.S. elections where their computer algorithms come out and say 80 plus percent chance Trump's going to win. Uh, we've seen major corporations with their big analytics tools say that interest and positive mention for Trump on average is dozens and dozens of times, depending on which algorithm, but, but stratospherically better for Hillary Clinton. We see that manifest on the ground where he gets 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people at rallies. Small towns unannounced, 5,000 in an hour show up. But there's a new algorithm out from the ultimate data collection system Google Trends shows internet users far more interested in WikiLeaks than Trump allegations. 
WikiLeaks search term versus Trump pussy, excuse the French, but this is news, 25 times, we've done the math, or 2,500x. That's in Paul Joseph Watson's article with the live graph for you. And that's on a good day when they've got their higher numbers uh, that WikiLeaks is only 25 times or 2,500x above it. This is what we see time and time again. Trump videos on YouTube will get hundreds of times the views of Hillary videos. I mean, you go to her YouTube page, her top videos maybe have 50,000 views, most of them a couple thousand. Obama's videos on the White House channel have a couple thousand, usually. I mean, it's incredible. The average Donald Trump video, they put out millions, ours, millions, thousands of channels on YouTube with millions of views per channel, sometimes per video. I don't know the math on this, but it's stratospheric. And the final days of this campaign, more and more, I just want to show people the polls, the numbers, the real science versus what mainstream media says. It's incredible. And then you look at the Republicans. Trump has raised them, the Republican Party, separate from what he's given himself over $100 million of his own money, $168 million as of today. Do you know much how much the Republican Party has done for TV ads for him, even though half that money that he is the head of the RNC now is supposed to go to the presidential front runner, the, the nominee? Zero. And the Washington Post was reporting it this morning like it was a good thing. Look, the Republicans don't like Trump. Good. How dare him, bitch. Uh, sore loser that they've given zero. Zero. Before the stupid uh, potty mouth controversy, and now they're on record calling every contestant they can get a hold of over 30 years of beauty pageants he put on to find a few mentally ill or sour grape women, and they've only found a couple. After interviewing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women, doing everything they can, the New York Times around the clock is doing this. And a lot of the women getting called now, and I'm, I'm thinking Trump's going to have a press conference in a week or so with all these beauty pageant contestants to say how great he was, going back decades ago. Former Miss Teen slams media witch hunt against Trump. He was an absolute gentleman. And she says the New York Times called her, uh, ABC called her, they contacted her and basically wanted her to talk bad. They wanted Miss Nebraska. Well, here's what she said. I was contacted today by a producer at ABC News in New York. She is uh, wanting to question me regarding the Miss Teen USA allegations. They also let me know that they are reaching out to all my fellow contestants from 97. I'm going to be very truthful so they find times when he wasn't married. And let ABC know that Donald Trump was an absolute gentleman. I never witnessed any inappropriate behavior whatsoever. The entire two weeks I participated in the pageant, I am sure that none of my interview will make the news since I have nothing but positive things to say about my experience with Donald. I do find it interesting and important for people to know that these are the depths the media is going to to smear the campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to know people that know Donald Trump very well. I'm going to stop right there. Before I ever endorsed him over a year ago, I, I did deep research on him, including I was worried about the fact that, you know, he's had a couple wives and, you know, doesn't lie that he likes the ladies. Was there any weird sex stuff? And they said the guy is extremely straight laced, doesn't drink, doesn't even take aspirin, hardly goes to the doctor. Uh, if anything, he eats like a pig. And the word is, I mean, he eats like two 30-ounce ribeyes a night, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, uh, sits there in his home theater just throwing popcorn at his face when he's by himself. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. You want to know the dirt, that's it. And, and he's a one-woman guy, but if something goes wrong, he then, boom, gets divorced or whatever, gets rid of the girlfriend and gets another girlfriend. Treats women ridiculously nice, sickeningly nice, to the point they can't even hardly stand at it because a lot of women don't be treated too nice. I mean, look at the women around Trump. They're on pedestals. So you want the dirt on Trump? He's just like me. He eats like a pig. Okay, that's it. It's a red-blooded American. And I've even reached out to former models that I know he dated. And, and I'm thinking about getting some of them on the show just because it's just, no, Donald Trump was ridiculously nice to me. That's it. So it's all lies. But they're going to talk to thousands of women. And they're going to find people that want money or that have got a, a, an axe to grind or, or, or Democrats that think they're on some holy jihad against Trump so they can come out and set him up. But it's not working because people see through it. They know Bill Clinton's a creepy monster.
They know Hillary's creepy. The people around her can't stand her. I'm getting into big news here in a moment that's even bigger than this, but I want to just give you the basics today because I know you already know this. We've got to get these messages out to everyone. And I'm going to put together some very well-produced reports codifying all this of how they're pulling out the stops on the rigging. But, of course, the media is acting like Trump's crazy for saying the sun came up this morning. Here's CNBC. Donald Trump declaimed Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim behind New York Times sex assault stories. Sex, now there's sex assault stories claiming he would shake a young woman's hand and then smile at him on an elevator. Bill Clinton settling rape cases is not an issue. And all these women lined up saying he you know, raped and the rest of it. And Bill Clinton's known philandering. That's not an issue. They're calling it assault when he says the women throw themselves at you could do anything, including grabbing them, you know, because the woman's jumping on you. I mean, that's what mammals do. They grab you, you grab them. The point is they're, they're making normal human activity illegal. They're implying it. This is what they do. Don't use mother and father. You know, when you're enrolling your elementary school student, someone might not have mother and father. They're, they're, they're banning all these terms. The New York Times attacked me yesterday in a big, huge cover story saying Jones believes there's a plot to break up the family. It's in the WikiLeaks. It's, it's in the college do 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 doctrine. It's what's taught. The family is seen as an institution that's a threat against government and corporate monopoly of control of the culture. Just like you said Obamacare was free or you could keep your doctor and you laugh at us. People know it's not free. They know you can't keep your doctor. They know it's meant to bankrupt the system and bring in a single payer. They know you're liars and that's why you're in so much trouble. And they're throwing everything they can against Trump right now. So getting back to these numbers, that's the best numbers they've got is interest in Trump and Pussygate. And so all they can do here is try to deceive the public that that's actually the number one issue and have this big, big hoax where, oh my gosh, it's the end of Trump. Why, 30 Republicans many of which already said they were voting for Hillary and who were openly, you know, globalist, have come out against him. Thank God, what an endorsement. But internally, the recordings have come out. New ones are out today. She said it publicly. But we subscribe to Hillary's uh, emails that she sends to Democrats. And we covered this last week. She says, we're in trouble. Trump has a dangerous advantage in battleground states. He is kicking our butt. Now, that's what she says privately. Publicly, she says she's winning. Just like the WikiLeaks say, don't worry, I'm going to say I'm against TPP, even though I helped write it and set it up over a decade. I'm very, very proud of it. We're going to get it done, but I need to win this election. That's in the WikiLeaks. Total deception. But Podesta, her chief of staff, comes out and spins it all like, well, you know, Donald Trump is connected to WikiLeaks, so ignore him, even though they're real. No, he said openly, please release them, of course. But, but implying that somehow because he's asking for it, the public wants it, that it's his fault. This is the upside down world they live in. But here's Trump saying corporate media is Clinton's most powerful weapon, no longer involved in journalism. That's right. It's extinct, basically. It's extinct on mainstream media, including Fox News, except for Sean Hannity and Fox and Friends. That's it. It's, it's, it's the takeover. And if Fox falls completely, you know the whole enchilada has fallen. So let's play that Trump clip. Powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political special interest no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda. And the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. And their agenda is to elect crooked Hillary Clinton at any cost, at any price, no matter how many lives they destroy. For them, it's a war. And for them, nothing at all is out of bounds. This is a struggle for the survival 
of our nation. Believe me. And this will be our last chance to save it on November 8th. Remember that. There has never been since the days of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington such truth being spoken. The mainstream media will not show him when he says that Hillary's a communist Chinese agent and then gives the evidence. He won't show it whenever he exposes Carlos Slim being a Mexican kingpin, uh, one of the richest men in the world involved in just all sorts of chicanery, owning the New York Times. They won't show it until now because they're going to try to push it like, oh, look, he doesn't like Mexicans. Well, I don't think Mexicans would like say, an American company owning their biggest newspaper and trying to get involved in their elections. Plus, Carlos Slim is not even a Mexican. Let's get that straight. He's from the Middle East. He's an Arab. Nothing against Arabs. I just want everybody to know the reason they call him Carlos Slim is he's not a Mexican. So we got a guy saying he's a Mexican involved in our elections down there running Mexico. And let me tell you, it takes a lot of, lot of juice to run Mexico. It takes a lot of juice to run Mexico. He is the El Jefe. By the way, he makes billions and billions. Last time I checked, it was almost $3 billion off U.S. taxpayers uh, in, in the last seven, eight years off of Obama phone. He is the sole provider of Obama phone. No wonder he's so rich and can prop up the New York Times with upwards of two hundred million dollars a year he reportedly puts into that that failed joke that burnout husk i mean think about that i'm digressing here but we got the communist chinese the corrupt pope the out of control saudi arabians that you know murder women and kill gays and and everything else you can imagine for no reason stone women to death all of this 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 motley crew this legion of doom all these corrupt multinational corporations, all the emails admitting they're robbing us blind, laughing at us behind the scenes, saying they want to shut down the free press and arrest journalists, doing it at a level never seen by any president in history. Hillary says she's going to make it much worse. And you got a bunch of weird, out of work or underemployed wannabe intellectuals that get their news from The Daily Show and MSNBC who really believe Hillary's about to win this election. No, she's about to steal it. And here's a clip of Hillary telling Ellen, worried about voter turnout. That's right. And we have the head of New York elections admitting on video, we gotta cue that back up later, that they are already bussing people around to precinct after precinct to vote over and over again, and that no IDs are allowed so they can engage in the fraud. On video, in the newspapers, nobody, it's happening in Florida, it's happening everywhere, and they're still worried, because here's the deal. Most Democrats I talk to, the head of the Green Party has come out and said, we must be against, I just got chills, I really got chills. We, we must vote for Trump, because Hillary's going to start World War III. I played last week, folks, the clip, and I'm played again, where Hillary said she's going to start a war with Russia. And then if they think there's any cyber attacks from Russia or from the Russian territory, globalists could go over there and launch a hack attack from, say, Moscow in some hotel room. Blame it on Russia. And she says she will use physical force against them. She is crazy. Russia's moving missiles up to their border now for the first time since the end of the Cold War. And now the head of the Green Party has come out. Jill Stein and says Donald Trump is better, close quote, Hillary more likely to start nuclear war. Is there any basic intellectualism left in so-called leftists? Because this is as leftist as you get. The old-fashioned left that I disagree with on some issues, but had a lot of moral high ground. You people are not liberals. I want to explain that to you very succinctly. You, you notice, I'm not talking to the listeners very much anymore, because you guys get it, okay? You gals get it. We need to get the word out to these people and say, do you understand Hillary is a psychotic demon? Julian Assange calls her a demon that wants to, quote, put our heads in a noose collectively, close quote. Jill Stein, very accomplished, liberal, but, but a good record of being very fair and, and actually standing up for working people. Disagree with the philosophy, makes people dependent, but her form of socialism is a lot better than corporate fascism, I'll tell you right now. Gonna have health care for free, make it free. Don't make it cost five times more and rape everybody for offshore corporations. Only thing worse than socialism and communism is corporate fascism. And we're sitting here looking at it. 
You got Julian Assange saying she's a demon wants to start World War III. You got Jill Stein saying she wants to start World War III. You've got the Russian president warning. You've got all the top defense experts, including conservatives and people who have studied the Cold War and war, coming out on C-SPAN and saying, what is this, the new McCarthyism? So I don't know how to get through to you, but she doesn't represent you. You think you're going to get power, get some more goodies? Black people voted for Obama in record numbers. What they got was double unemployment. You go, why? Because the globalists, once they got you, once a pimp's got you, they want to break you down. Once they got you addicted to drugs and 10 guys on you a day or whatever, you're lucky if you get a bucket of fried chicken. Like on that pimp show on you know, interviewing real pimps, you learn a lot from them, from the establishment. And, and, the, and she's been in a car wreck or run over, whatever, and the pimp's in there. She's like, baby, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get back on the street for you, baby. I'm so sorry. And her mother's there. She goes, what did you do to my baby? And they're interviewing the pimp. And he, you know, what do you give her? Like, how much do you pay her, the money she raises? He goes, I don't pay her anything. She's lucky if I feed her. That's how Obama and the New World Order are. He goes to Africa and he says, you can't have development, can't have cars, can't have air conditioning. <laughs> they're like, all right, you're black. We're for it. Actually, they're not. The Africans get it. This is an epic time to be alive, folks. Hillary is plunging in every metric, every real metric, every big corporate bot out there goes, Actually, we're getting 12 to 1, 20-something to 1, 40-something to 1. I mean, the lowest numbers are way above 10, 12, 13% in all the algorithms. Some algorithms have Trump hundreds of times more popular than Hillary. I can't even believe these numbers. They're so incredible. I mean, we're talking mega whopping landslide, and that's why they're panicking. Here's another metric. AP study I talk about so much from three months ago. 6% trust rate nationally, thousands and thousands surveyed personally in a real poll. Say they have 6% trust in MSM. It's about that in Congress, about 9%. Of course, Hillary doesn't have support. Remember during the uh, primaries at first, she was getting like 10% in national polls. Jeb was getting 3 4%. These people vacationed together. Nobody wanted them. It's a total hoax. And all they're trying to do is sell you on the hoax that she really wins. Now, they're having trouble stealing these battleground states, and most metrics come up to, I'm going from memory, but it's 268. I'm going from memory here, but, but you have to split. If you split the delegates in the battleground states, it keeps coming up tied, is what a lot of their models show, even though they're able to steal a few states. Tied. Well, then you're going to have nine justices, and if you've got four Republican, four Democrat, it's deadlocked. It's deadlocked. But Scalia was going to be there just like in 2000. And so Scalia had to go. And what do I have here now? What do I have here? What's in WikiLeaks? Wetworks. Podesta email makes assassination reference day before Scalia's death. And they go on to say, yeah, we're going ahead with it. And he's talking to one of the other top officials. And he says, all right, get ready. This is going to be really rough, batting down the hatches. Now, and you read it, what's clearly happening is they're having a big meeting out at Martha's Vineyard where a lot of the big decisions get made. And, they, and he's, he's emailing back and forth. And he goes, all right, so we're going to have wet works? Didn't know that was going on at pool parties. All right, getting ready to... Batten down the hatch, this is going to get rough. I'm going to come back and cover this in the next segment, but let me get to the next clip because I mentioned it, but here it is. They know Trump's way ahead by every metric, except their fake polls where they sample double, you know, right down to 7 to 10 to 12 to 14 percent, but some of them are double or more where they sample more Democrats than Republicans. I mean, how dumb do they think you are? Then, oh, of course he's ahead there. I mean, it's, it's totally rigged. A five-year-old can figure this out, a three-year-old. But they want that illusion. So here's Hillary worried about voter turnout. I don't want anybody to think this election's over because it's been so unpredictable up till now mm -hmm. that I'm not taking anything for granted. We've got to work really hard uh, for the next uh, three and a half weeks because who knows? Who knows what can happen? And so everybody who's watching and everybody who has followed this election, please turn out and vote. And, of course, as they're doing in New York and Florida, vote many times on the Democrat buses. 
on the old moveon.org buses, just ride from spot to spot. N nice Democrats around the computer. Come on in. No ID needed. Just get right in here. You already voted 10 times a day. Go right over there and vote again. <laughs> and in what, six, seven states, the Democrats almost passed bills to let illegals from China, Russia, Mexico, you name it, vote the day they're here. You get in, you can vote. The overthrow of the country is what you're witnessing. Ladies and gentlemen, Roger Stone has been accused of the same man, Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, the same man that's talking about wet works the night before uh, Scalia's killed the next day in high-level Democratic Party discussions of preparing themselves for the coming storm. The same guy is accusing Trump ally Roger Stone, Fox News is covering it, of colluding with WikiLeaks. So we've seen Congress have these hearings. All Stone did was throw an intermediary talk to Assange about when stuff was coming out. And, and Assange has been talking to tons of media. But again, they imply like we're three-year-olds that they're the authority figure and oops, I caught you breathing air. Oops, I caught you saying you're heterosexual or saying mother or father. Or you're a first grader, you asked for brownies at lunch, so they called the police to interview you just to let you know that we can say you're all under suspicion because you might have met a black person asking for a brownie. I want a brownie in the school lunch line. I like brownies. Here come the police. That was in the news. Back. Oh, well, those are just little side issues. No, they're not. It's the plan. The total takeover of language, scorched earth, dumbing everyone down. It's in the WikiLeaks that came out last week where they said we want a dumbed down, unconscious population. But I have them all on TV admitting that they're lying to us. I mean, Charlie Rose laughing about it. Jonathan Gruber laughing about it. Robert Gibbs laughing about it. Ezekiel Emanuel laughing about it because in their psychology, they love to rub it in. Dishonorable people do that. An honorable person doesn't even rub in a righteous victory. I'm guilty when I have to crush evil people. I just don't like crushing my fellow humans, but it has to be done to protect the innocent. These people enjoy it. They revel in it because they are degenerate trash. And oh, they've got the paramilitaries and they've got the mafias and they've got the hit teams and they've got the drones and they've been hijacked the West system. These, these miscreants who, who just at Bill Clinton's first inauguration in 1993, remember, it was famous, it was in the news. It was in front of the press. Ron Silver, a Hollywood producer, also actor. He's in Die Hard, the first one. He plays the bad guy. FC, this is how disconnected mentally ill these people are, because they're real smart when it comes to criminality and, 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 and manipulation and deceiving dumb people. But when it comes to how things work or history, they're so intellectually lazy, they have no grasp of it. They're always real arrogant about other famous people or other great patriots. or No, it's all about them, okay? And so F-16s fly over. This is famous. And he goes, oh, how dare they? The military hates us. And Hillary says, Mr. Silver, Ron. It's our military now. I knew about this a few years ago, but I didn't even tell the story because it sounded so crazy because it was in newspapers in Europe and things at the time. But will you guys pull up the new crown prince of uh, Thailand, please? You get arrested in Thailand if you even mildly criticize the monarchy. But our media always calls it a free country, even though it's not. But the new crown prince has gone too far and basically dresses very effeminately. I'll just leave it to you at that. And they're turning against him. But guess why they really turned against him? He made his girlfriend's poodle <laughs> the head of the Air Force. <laughs> now, now, understand something. This is something they always do in the last phases of insanity. They, they, they want to get caught. They want to get removed from power at a subconscious level. Hillary and others going on TV, saying how much they hate Americans, how much they hate baristas and, and, and Bernie supporting basement dwellers and telling what they really think of you. They enter the last phase. They always make their horse or their dog head of the Roman Senate or head of the Air Force or such things. Then 
they usually blow up part of the Capitol or slit their wrist. One of those, I, mean, I don't know why they do it. It's in their psychology. You're given everything generation after generation like Kim Jong-un. That's a communist uh, hereditary dictatorship. But then you also have right-wing fascist ones like the hereditary dictatorship they call royalty in Thailand. And by the way, if you ever want to go to Thailand, they say, don't ever talk bad even as a Westerner. They will lock your butt up. Well, I have no desire to go to Thailand. I hear it's got some nice beaches, but uh, I don't, you know, I have the same taste of, uh, you know, uh, Bill Clinton and people that fly around on the Leader Express for children. But I just put mainstream news articles on screen of him making the poodle the head of the Air Force. Let's, let's put it back on screen for radio listeners. I'm going to read the headlines. And the reason I go there is... These people are disconnected. I mean, Ron Silver really thought F-16s were flying over because they were mad at Bill Clinton becoming president. They were so disconnected how the military works, how the country works, what, what military parades are. They were so disdainful that he was, ah, oh, what's that? Ah. Literally, they're like, don't worry. Those are our aircraft now, Ron. This is who rules us? People that are so dumb, they don't know the new inaugurated president gets military flyovers? It's like Congress when they're sitting there talking to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dumford, two weeks ago, and he's going, but if we fire missiles and they're not manned and we take out the airfields and aircraft, no one will die but the Russians. And that'll teach them a lesson, correct? And the general goes, yes, but then they'll respond to our bases nearby where, where we're our manned. That'll be an act of war. And they just come back and they go, but we're going to use missiles so nobody gets hurt. They don't even understand doctrine that then you hit someone with missiles, they fire unmanned missiles at you, S-300s, S-400s, and so on. That will take out aircraft carriers just like that. Cannot be stopped. Just, you know, World War III, like, when the aircraft carriers get hit, the United States is going to launch missiles, cruise missiles in, and nuclear war starts. And But Congress, Republicans, Democrats, they just keep week after week, you can watch these hearings going, I want you to get tough on the Russians, boy. I want you to hit him. Well, we're going to need a declaration of war for that or the, for the president to call for us to strike Russia. We're prepared to right now. We're prepared to launch war with Russia uh, and right now. Just give us the order. We'll follow orders. But they're so disconnected in Congress about not taking responsibility. They go, you don't do it. You're going to take responsibility. Do, 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 do. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. And, and, of course, there's a level dumber than that I talked about last week, and that's I'm really concerned, uh, head of the Navy. If we put 8,000 more Marines on Guam, won't the island tip over? And he was serious. He thought, again, I already talked, I got so much news to cover. But I'm saying fundamentally, folks, we think of the people running Washington as super smart. And there are some evil people behind them that are. But they put all these idiots in so they won't ask questions that are dangerous. So before I get into the wet work story that's so huge, let's play this clip of Jill Stein since I mentioned it. The head of the Green Party. The Democrats ridicule and demonize all the rest of it because, you know, she's not playing ball with them. She's not a fake leftist like, like, like Bernie Sanders. She says Donald Trump is better, Hillary more likely to start nuclear war. Absolutely. Just that issue alone, as I've said over and over again, and they have the nerve to run TV ads that mimic the 1963-64 election where Barry Goldwater, who didn't want war, they have the countdown with a little girl with a daisy. And as she pulls each piece off, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, boom, hydrogen bomb goes off on zero. But with Hillary, that's really what's going on. This is a biblical thing that's happening right now. Let's play the clip. Wing extremism grows out of the policies of the Clintons, in particular NAFTA, which sent our jobs overseas, and Wall Street deregulation, which blew nine million jobs uh, up into smoke. So that's what's creating this right wing extremism. A vote for Hillary Clinton isn't going to fix it. And one last point, which is this, that it's now Hillary Clinton who wants to start an air war uh, with Russia over Syria by calling for a no-fly zone. We have 2,000 nuclear missiles on hair trigger alert, and Mikhail Gorbachev, the uh, former premier of the Soviet Union, is saying we are closer to a nuclear war than we have ever been. 
under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. Fortunately, we have another choice other than these two candidates who are both promoting lethal policies. But on the issue of war and nuclear weapons and the potential for nuclear war, it's actually Hillary's policies, which are much scarier than Donald Trump, who does not want to go to war with Russia. He wants to seek modes of, uh, of working go. together, which is the... Ladies and gentlemen, I am seriously concerned about nuclear war. So is everyone else who thinks. Meanwhile, we have been so domesticated, so separated from the land, so separated from cause and effect, so separated from reality, the average person, that this isn't even an issue in this country now. And we have the New York Times coming out this weekend today with this article. <laughs> Donald Trump slipping in polls warns of stolen election. Meanwhile, I have the head of New York election board, who's a Democrat, saying they're already stealing it with early voting, driving a bunch of people around voting over and over again. Standard operating procedure. So their response is to say he's a total kook as if no one has any memory of two months ago when I came out and said, emergency alert, emergency message to Donald Trump. They stole the nomination from Sanders. They tried to steal it from you. The Republicans are going to double cross you a month out from the election. They're going to try to create the illusion that you really lost. You understand this and know this. You must get out ahead of it now and expose election fraud. And yes, then I told him that personally in lengthy discussions. And I didn't tell him something he didn't know. He concurred with everything I said because it was the truth. And of course, he had some advisors killing. That'll make it look like you're being a sore loser, even though you're ahead. No, no, don't do that. No, he needs to do it. And then he was proven right because it forced Obama to say there's no such thing as election fraud. What is that? Like, I don't smell like the devil, or demon. With, no, that Alex Jones. It was, it was, again, I totally trolled them again. So I could then get attention on Julian Assange and Bill Clinton and everybody else saying Hillary's a demon. These people are so easy to troll because, again, on average, they think when F-16s fly over, it's the enemy. <laughs> I mean, the, the average person, even that's mid-level, can't really do anything but be like middle school where they act real sullen and bossy and have the right shoes and the right suit on and drive the right BMW. I'm not bashing you have a BMW. I'm, I'm just saying. They're husk. They're just a bunch of followers. Who sit around in their email so confident, we're about to make run a major op. Okay, better batten down the hashes. Wow, didn't know you were setting up wet work and you know at Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> and the next day Scalia's dead. I mean, you know, you don't talk about that on email, but see, you're so arrogant. And I just love all these wimps that want a war with the soldiers who aren't perfect but built this empire that you've hijacked, who want to make us the enemy who want to make the patriots that, that, that set up this country the enemy, picking a fight with the very people you've hijacked that are your slaves right now, but you're so angry at the liberty movement that you want to take it over and destroy it to mount it on the wall like you went on some type of safari. And that's what it comes down to. They're just out to get Red-blooded Americans of every race, color, and creed that want to be self-sufficient and macho and strong. They don't want it. They don't women being women with all that power and running the house and running the kids and running and a strong man out there the whole nine yards. Mama needs to go to work. She does. They don't want that. They want the government to wear the pants, and we're all out there in the slave quarters. And boy... I covered this all week, so I'm not going to get back into it. But how many quotes did I have? How they want us dumb, subservient, in our own world, stupid and poor. They want you poor. They want you stupid. Donald Trump wants you to be rich. He wants prosperity. And you can call, some Christians could call that worldly. You know what? He is worldly. But you really study the devil. The devil gets people to sell out for worldly things. He doesn't ever give them to you. The New World Order wants to make you super poor and under their control so they can run your life. 
And there are many cases in history where God sets up people like Trump to bring countries back and, and, and societies back from the brink. And if we pass up on this, folks, remember you asked for it and remember you wanted it and remember you accepted it. Because they're going to try to steal the election. Right now it's about exposing they're planning to do it, exposing that Trump's really far ahead, and exposing the fact that we're going to have to stand up against it when they try to steal it, and we're organizing that right now, and they know it, and they're pissed. Because remember, there's no such thing as election fraud, but we forced them to come in and federalize it all, which they were already planning. That was a devastating victory. But one of the most important things I ever did analyzing the globalists was to realize really smart, evil, super geniuses set them up a long time ago and set up this system for them. And, and, and even the elites admit that. The ones that have taken it over are not hardworking and are just a lot of them two steps above being mentally retarded, which makes them more dangerous to start a war. We're in greater peril. I'm not glad we have elites running things that are a bunch of knuckle dragon snot nosed demons. There is so much incredible news to cover, but that Jill Stein is just over the top. We've got to get that out to everybody. The, the, the top real liberal in the country says Hillary Clinton wants a war because she said it. I got the clip. She wants a war. She said, day one is president. We're going in and imposing a no-fly zone. And the Russians have said, we've been invited in. We're here legally. We're not back in radical Islam. We're going to fight you. They've got U.S. generals shooting their mouths off saying, get ready for war right now. And then meanwhile, we've got Podesta. This is such a big story from yesterday. I'm going to have it reposted because it came out in the afternoon. It didn't get the attention it needed. This is so big. Wet work. Podesta email makes assassination reference days before Scalia death. Didn't think wet work meant pool parties at the vineyard because that's where they meet to make these meetings. Hillary Clinton, and then, but it's how they respond back. Hill, you know, doing code but not going all the way with it. Hillary Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta used a term known to reference assassination. Now, that's all it means. In an email sent to a lobbyist days before Supreme Court Anthony Scalia mysterious death, the email exchange with Podesta and D.C. lobbyist Stephen Elmendorf appeared to in a trove of documents dumped by the organization WikiLeaks. Didn't yet think wet works meant pool parties in the, at the vineyard, Podesta says in April 9th email. And the subject line, thanks, I'm all in, lobbyist delegate Stephen Elmendorf replies. Sounds like it'll be a bad night. We all need to buckle up and double down. There's two ways to see it. They're clearly talking about, oh, I didn't know pool parties out at the vineyard. These type of decisions are getting made where the Clintons and the Obamas were vacationing at the time. They were on vacation when Scalia was down south. And I even made the you know, point back at the time. I said, I bet you they made the, a decision. You can go back to this. I think two days after Scalia was found dead, uh, I started making the point, you know, they're all on vacation in the vineyards. Hmm, wonder what decisions got made up there. And uh, here he is talking about, oh, yeah. You know, I didn't think wet work meant pool parties at the vineyard, Podesta says in an email marked the ninth out of the subject line, thanks. I'm all in, the lobbyist and Hillary delegate Steve Elmendorf replies. Sounds like it'll be a bad night. We all need to buckle up and double down. I'm all in. So either, hey, we're running some serious ops here. What are people doing having parties over there? Or, wow, didn't know those kind of decisions were coming down when they're out there having pool parties. Or maybe they were just talking about wet work and Podesta just wanted to sound cool and talk about, you know, killing people, but he's not really involved in that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like in The Godfather, the first one, when the uh, wife of Michael uh, says, uh, oh, come on, you know, your dad kills people, but presidents don't have people killed and government doesn't. And he says, okay, who's being naive now? The one man standing against them stealing an election dies. They wouldn't do that. They'd only kill 200,000 Christians for fun in Syria. They'd only drone innocent people all over the world to stir the Muslims up. They'd only wage war against our families and our Bill of Rights and Constitution and our prosperity to have us be dumbed down and poor, as WikiLeaks says. No, no, I don't think they're, I don't think wet work means that at all. Then they had the Washington Post come out a month later and say, yeah, he died in a secret society ritual. They threw that in on top. And a pillow was found on his face. It was announced instantly, no autopsy. Within minutes of them saying he died, they wouldn't say where the body was out in the middle of nowhere in South Texas.
out in the middle of nowhere. There was two messages. Messages to people that are informed. You shut up and stand down and you're dead, including the rest of the Supreme Court. And it was a message to the rest of the dumb dodo birds out there that don't know which end is up. That absolutely, we don't do autopsies now. And pillows are found on your little face. And all out in the hallways, they have devil masks by the hundreds. I, I, we have the video package, guys. When I get to this, I wanted to roll some of that. We talked about it because new viewers will be watching saying, oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, we were there. We were there two days after he was dead with them threatening us to get out. We were there with the guy that got a special medal that runs it from Obama that no one else has gotten, personally awarded to him on national TV, who's involved in black ops from Vietnam to today. Oh, the ranch is a very nice group of people. Nice little command base right by the Mexican border with sculptures of demons eating children in the main foyer. But everything is, everything is awesome when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when you're part of a dream. Dream that you're part of the establishment. Everything's okay. By the way, we're ending it when these sell out, which is going to be in the next 20 days or so, 24 days out from the election. Hillary for president shirts are historic. I could keep them going forever, but this is the third round of limited edition. It's over. Also, we're almost sold out of the Gadsden-style Lock Her Up shirt, Made in America. That's available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals. We have our new Biome Defense um, with 25 billion live and active cultures and 23 different probiotics. That's the half-price version. Or the 50 billion live active cultures. The Rolls-Royce of, of next-level probiotic. Held in our cold room, made with the top scientists, seven years of research, total game changer. And we also have the InfoWars Solar Base Station. We're entering, uh, stopping this special this weekend, 33% off that amazing system at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. Bottom line, shop with the good guys. You're helping fund the tip of the spear. We'll be right back. Thank you for your support. Trump, of course, came out two days ago and said that the Election is about global government, the end of U.S. sovereignty. That's exactly what it is. He says the mainstream media are agents of globalism. I'm looking at some of the headlines on Drudge Report. Uh, there's Carlos Slim meeting at the Clinton Foundation. Slim behind the slime. That's the New York Times and others running around that he owns. The uh, Arab slash owner of Mexico, I guess, Obama phone Baron, he gets the money for the Obama phones. Taxpayers pay for it. <laughs> you gotta love it. That way they can keep track of their voters. Uh, the, oh, Donald Trump doesn't like Mexicans now. Oh my gosh, he doesn't like Carlos Slim, this foreigner running the New York Times with the New York Times 24-7 claiming that you know Trump's groping all these women that just now magically appeared. This is totally and completely manufactured. Where do you think all of this is going? Roger Stone is gonna join us at the bottom of the hour that when he leaves, I'm going to open the phones up specifically. How do we stop election fraud 2016? Well, we may not be able to stop it, but we're going to have to start making the case that Trump's really ahead. And we know they're already involved with people voting illegally over and over and over and over again uh, inside places like New York City and, of course, major cities also in Florida and Ohio, Pennsylvania. This is going on big time. I mean, we sent people inside the head Cleveland office, Millie Weaver and our reporters, and as undercover you know, journalists, and, and the Democrats were like, we don't know anybody voting for her. We can't find anybody to support her. We can't get any volunteers. No one will give money except big corporations. I mean, they sound like they're Trump supporters when she's talking to the head in the city because it doesn't exist. The crowds don't exist. There's new Google algorithms out showing 2,500 times more searches for the WikiLeaks leaks day to day than there are for all this Trump made up garbage. The people aren't interested, they've rejected it, but they know that you're an individual alone. So you don't have a big picture awareness generally. So they wanna make you feel like you're alone and believe the con game. That only the weakest minded people believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the incredibly rare Drudge Siren, Drudge Siren, Obama claimed executive privilege in Hillary Mass. Emails, even that was secret. See, now I'm claiming executive privilege. That's like taking the fourth. Even claiming executive privilege.
is now secret. I, uh, that's how secretive the media is and how controlled. Podesta asked Clinton lawyer, think we should hold emails to and from Obama. Well, that's CNS News. In a March 4th, 2015 email to Hillary Clinton's lawyer, Cheryl Mills Clinton, eventual campaign chairman John Podesta, who likes to talk about wet work a few days before Scalia dies, John Podesta asked if they should withhold email exchanges between Clinton and President Obama that were sent over Clinton's private server. The day before Podesta sent his email to Mills, the House Benghazi Committee privately told Clinton to preserve and hand over the emails, which were destroyed. The FBI report on Clinton emails notes on page 18 on March 3rd, 2015, the United States House Select Committee on Benghazi provided a letter to the law firm of Williams and Connolly, where the FBI director used to work, requesting the preservation and production of all the documents and media related to the email addresses. Keep scrolling down. The email from Podesta to Mills titled Special Category Reads, Think We Should Hold Emails to and from POTUS, President of the United Treason. That's the heart of the executive privilege. We could get them to ask for that. They may not care, but it seems they will. Mills did not respond to email. The Clinton-Obama emails were turned over to the State Department, were later announced would not release them, but they erased a bunch too. It came out. And of course, no need to declare the executive privilege because you just simply deep-sixed them. We're going to come back with the rest of this article. Straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones. Alan Skrolkin, the head of New York elections, was caught on tape at a Christmas party last year. It was released, obviously, earlier this week on Monday, admitting to Project Veritas that indeed the Democratic Party and candidates were already in, uh, you know, uh, in elections then and in the future, bussing people around to vote illegally because no IDs were being shown and they would vote over and over again. Now we know this, we know it's already started to happen again. But the fact is the New York Times has come out and said that Donald Trump slipping in polls warns of stolen election. No, Donald Trump warned of it when he was ahead 10, 15 points a few months ago. And the numbers have been all over the map. And then Obama said there was no such thing. And then they came out and said, we're federalizing it to keep it safe from Trump, his dirty tricksters, and the evil Ruskies that are hiding under the table. So they're the ones that are discredited. They had a big New York Times article on me yesterday saying I'm crazy because I believe in election fraud and that they want our guns. Well, the new WikiLeaks shows Hillary Clinton plans to use executive orders to ban all semi-autos. It's a fact. We're right, you're wrong, you're lying to your readers. And now we know it is the Mexican kingpin, Carlos Slim, that owns the New York Times, that is directing all of this against Trump, calling up every pageant contestant he's ever had, trying to get him to say things. And they also want to go out to the free press. She says she wants to go out to the alt-right, it has no right to exist. They want to bring back the fairness doctrine, and then they go after a journalist. That's what he's been doing the last 15 years, is writing books and articles. Roger Stone and Podesta has, quote, implicated Trump advisor Roger Stone over WikiLeaks email release. That's preposterous. But it, it, it's acting like it's bad as a journalist if you try to talk to Julian Assange. He's gone on everything from NPR to the New York Times to, to, to CNN to Sean Hannity. I mean, it's crazy. But Stone obviously has been trying to find out when it's coming out, but he's told me privately, he said on air, and it's the truth, that he had no idea of the fact that Assange has said it would be damning and get her indicted, and now we're seeing it is. But it changes the subject. Who cares how it comes out as long as it's authentic? But then Podesta is in another chilling email that just came out, talking about wet work, what, what is it, two days before Scalia is found dead. And his counterpart is, we got to batten down the hatches and get ready. This is going to get rough. This is a war, folks. I'm sure when he talks about wet work, he means maybe working at a zoo with seals or something, or, or, or maybe uh, power washing you know, the sides of buildings. I, I'm, I'm sure there's no such thing when he's found with a pillow over his head and no autopsy. It was basically a message that he sleeps with the fishes. In my humble view, this should be investigated because... We know the Clintons long trail and their minions of death, the wars, the illegal wars. Why not give her another peace prize you know, like they gave Obama? But first, this clip, because I want to get into this first with Roger Stone and then into how he's being attacked. But it all ties together as an attack on the press uh, with the head of New York elections, who I just mentioned, 
admitting that they're buzzing people around. There is election official caught on video blasting de Blasio's ID program. And he's a Democrat. He admits it's wrong. People can vote over and over and over again, but only other Democrats. Here it is. I think there's a lot of voter fraud. Right. Like I say, people don't realize certain neighborhoods in particular, they bust people around to vote. They do what? They bust them around. They put them in a bus and they move from the poll site to the poll site. Like what kind of neighborhoods? Oh, well, I don't want to say. Commissioner of New York Elections. stop right there he, he goes on to say it's wrong to his credit roger stone uh joins us to, to to break all this down hillary played the clip earlier admits that they are uh really worried about people getting out to vote that she internally thinks she's in trouble roger and then i also want to go into jill stein saying basically vote donald trump because hillary is uh more likely to start a nuclear war uh and she's dead on i mean this this is an amazing time to be alive my friend Yes, indeed, Alex. I played that clip on the Stone Cold Truth this morning. You have both Jill Stein uh, and Cindy Sheehan. You remember her who camped out outside George W.'s ranch to protest the, the war in Iraq, now both saying that Donald Trump is less dangerous to world peace than Hillary Clinton. Meanwhile, in Syria, uh, you know, we're hurtling towards war. Barack Obama says he'll make decisions at the end of next week on his military options. Uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a situation in which nobody involved is our friend. It's really extraordinary. Uh, but the last 24 hours have been turned upside down because uh, first John Podesta and then last night Robbie Mook of the Clinton campaign uh, both asserted that I knew about the WikiLeaks hacking of John Podesta before the fact. Just to be very clear for everybody, that is categorically false. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's adding two and two and coming up with six. The reason they say this is because in August, in a, two different tweets, I predicted that, um, that Podesta's business dealings would become uh, problematic. I was, a little more, I was a little more oblique. I said, oh, Podesta's time in the barrel will come. That wasn't based on anything I learned from doing Assange or WikiLeaks. It was based on my own research. Uh, and but it's also down, been, he was involved in $35 million deals with the Ruskies for uranium. I mean, he was the go-between man with uh, the Don Hillary. I mean... Well, to that, now don't confuse him with his criminal brother, Tony Podesta, who was, the, uh, who was a consultant to that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not confusing him. I'm, I know he's but, the main but one, but, but, but he's been involved. John he's been involved with Hillary. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, deeply. Bottom line of this, he has been laundering Russian money for the Clinton Foundation. He has been laundering Russian money for the purposes of purchasing uh, U.S. military te technology. Uh, I have a piece up now at the Stone Cold Truth that documents all of this. Uh, that is what I was referring to. This piece has taken me some time because some of the original documents were in both German and Russian. It took some time to translate them. But, uh, and also, you've had your computers hacked repeatedly and everything erased. They're very concerned. Yeah, no, look, this is deflection. In other words, to, how do we get people to uh, ignore the substance of the emails? Well, you know, blame the Republicans for hacking. This is, this is part and parcel of the same phony argument that Donald Trump and Alex Jones and Roger Stone and, and Milo and the rest of these deplorable, we all work for the Russians. When in fact it's Hillary who's in bed with the Russians. It's Hillary. I was about to say, I mean, I wish this check would arrive at some point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, so uh, it is, it's the politics of personal destruction. And I would have to say, of the networks, only NBC Nightly News came and uh, filmed my response, which they ran, ran in the Nightly News. From CNN and Fox, crickets. 
crooked. And again, for folks that don't understand the history of journalism or being in a free country, anytime you get charged with some incredible thing, you get a response back, even if you're an axe murderer. Now there's no proof. They just hang you out to dry on every major TV channel in the country uh, and then don't let you respond. That is fascism. Yeah, I know. You know, to the credit of the print media, I I responded to the Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, and many many others. But it uh, the electronic thing is shocking. I've just never seen that. I mean, I understand I'm banned, <clears throat> but last week John King attacked me on CNN. This week uh, I've got I've got uh, Podesta attacking me. Simple fairness, journalistic ethics require. Offering me an opportunity to respond. Uh, well, as you really know, funny. and I played the clip last hour, Trump said all journalistic integrity is basically gone by the establishment media, uh, and they're basically pushing world government and globalism. Let me ask you this now. Watching how they're behaving, what's going on, they seem to be getting more desperate. Uh, I know Trump, according to my own research, is ahead in a lot of the battleground states. Uh, it, it appears they're preparing to sell the idea of election fraud. Correct me if I'm wrong. What do we do to counter that, and then what do we do once they actually steal it? Well, I think you and I have both been out front on this in a way that drives the establishment politicians crazy because they want us to believe our ballot is sacrosanct and that the and that the system will have integrity. I take the view if these computerized machines can be easily hacked, they will be. Uh, but I'm, I'm less worried about the Russians hacking them and more worried about the Democratic machine under Rahm Emanuel, in all honesty, they have more experience in, in uh, election fraud. Um, I, this is why I got involved with StopTheSteals.org. We are literally shortly, hours away from, uh, I am told, posting our, uh, our comprehensive exit poll plan for which we have recruited over 500 volunteers. So we need manpower. We need good men and women who uh, will give us uh, their services on election day as volunteers uh, that can go for some training on how to conduct these exit polls. Uh, but the only hedge you have uh, is twofold. You could examine the, the software for the machines before the voting begins, and that should be done. Uh, it, it, and we're going to try to demand it in certain places. And then secondarily, you have to have a scientifically operated exit poll to compare them with the actual machine results. And if the swing is too wide, you will know there's fraud. I don't think you can just lose the election and say, well, I was defrauded without evidence of fraud. But some people say, well, it would be un-American to challenge the results of the election. If you had hard evidence of fraud, it would be un-American not to challenge the office. But you must have real evidence. That's my view. Stay there, my friend. I want to come back and talk about what you just mentioned, because this is Reuters. Obama's meeting today to decide whether they're going to start attacking Russian targets inside Syria. That's mainstream news. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the headlines I'm sitting here reading during the break, and it's surreal. Because I talk about it so much, and then the clock keeps ticking towards midnight, and the average American isn't even aware or concerned. Our military is. Uh, people that are uh, informed are, are concerned. But here are the headlines. Reuters, Obama to weigh Syrian military options today on whether to start striking Syria, which Russia will say is an act of war. Uh, Russia, Russians warned nuclear war is imminent. This is mainstream newspapers I'm reading. Locate your nearest bunker. I mean, that's Reuters. These are real headlines I'm here reading to you. And remember six months ago, it was all funny when I was telling you this. This was in the Russian newspapers. And Russia, I guess, doesn't exist or something when I read out of the Moscow Times to the average trendy. But, but this is serious. And Roger, there's like an insanity in the air, it seems like. I mean, you've got Podesta with emails about wet, about wet work. You've got... All this other craziness going on. You've got this obsession with clowns and clown attacks. I mean, it, have we woken up in an insane asylum? Well, we're in wag the dog territory. Uh, this is uh, war as a pretext for stealing this election. Uh, and uh, the, you're right. The American people seem to be completely oblivious that we're likely to go to war in a conflict in which I can't find any inherent interest of ours nor can I find friends on either side. I mean, Assad is financing Hezbollah. He's backed up by the Russians. 
On the other side, you have ISIS, backed up by the Saudis. I think they proved on 9-11 that they're not friends of ours. We don't have any friends. This is really about what it's about different sects of of Islam. It's about Wahhabism, really. Uh, that we would spend a single dollar uh, here or a single American life. It, it, it's just it's astounding. It's How would you crazy. sum up Roger Stone, the age and the world we live in right now? Dangerous, because the globalists will do anything, including starting a world war, if that's what it takes to retain power. I, I know you want to talk and about private stuff with Donald Trump, but uh, I mean, he seems to be stronger than ever. How is he handling these attacks? They seem to be, the polls show these attacks are bouncing off. Well, the, and these these uh, accusers that the New York Times has put forward claiming that, you know, Donald Trump shoved his uh, tongue down their throat 30 years ago. Of course, they didn't report it then. They're just reporting it now, two weeks before election. It's already unraveling. One of these women has been tied back to the Clinton Library. Uh, before that, the Clinton Foundation. Uh, this is a, this is a, you know, this is a, a setup. This is a, a fraud, uh, and a perpetrated, I imagine, by David Brock, uh, who went out and recruited these women. The other headline you'll see is that one of the women, Kathleen Willey, uh, is uh, is uh, speaking out against Clinton because Roger Stone paid her mortgage off. No, I didn't. I set up a GoFundMe account and helped raise money to keep her home out of foreclosure. Our listeners did that. We did it. I love how they act like everything we do is in secret. It's like, he once went on Howard Stern. It was a secret show. No, that's public. Or uh, you know, once Trump kissed a woman, uh, all these great evils. Or, or, or the Clintons, you know, had her mortgage pulled, so we helped her out. She was already a critic. She was already on NBC, you know, decades ago exposing this. Exactly. And look, and I, 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 yeah, I think I did give $100, and many, many, many other people, InfoWars listeners included, think we raised around forty grand to keep her house out of... I uh, personally, if I remember correctly, program. told him to give a couple thousand, my accountant, because I, I give to charity all the time, and I'm sad to, for what happened to this woman. I interviewed her like 20 years ago. I mean, I know yeah, this woman. But the media, as you know, they, they twist these things, and yes, I did pay uh, Kathy Shelton, the, the woman who was uh, raped at 12 and then assaulted essentially in the courtroom by Hillary Clinton, I paid her $2,500 over a vote to sit down with us over two days and let us video. Yeah, how do you think you get people to take off work there. that are poor? You've got to give them the money to come see you. But I, I certainly haven't paid her to change her story because she's been saying the same thing since she was 12 years old. So it's just, uh, on the other hand, no one talks about how much George Soros pays David Brock to smear us. About you know, I, uh, you may have to go, but if not, I'd like to put bookends on this. Can I ask you a few more questions? And, and then I'll also make the point, I paid, you know, for the hotel for Danny Williams and bought him lunch. Does that mean I bought him off? No. He's been saying he's Bill Clinton's son since his mama told him that, you know, 25 years ago. Uh, Roger Stone's our guest, StoneColdTruth.com. We're going to get a nuclear war. After we finish up with Roger Stone, it's never been more imminent. I'm saying this so people get concerned and we cannot have it happen. I got three kids. A lot of folks have had the idea. I don't know who first had it, but Owen Schroyer's been pushing it, one of our reporters, to wear red shirts at the polling places so everybody can see that you're red state, not blue state. And again, the Republican Party, I hate them. I'm, I'm, I'm nonpartisan. Trump is an outlier, a dark horse taking over the party. Gary Johnson was the globalist taking over the Democratic Party, in my view. But we've got to wear red shirts. Uh, I'm going to come out with a shirt. It'll take about a week and a half to get here. Then we'll rush to liberate it to you. That's going to say, Trump is my president. Infowars.com on the back to wear out as well. Uh, but they may say, oh, that's a political shirt. You can't wear it inside. But get a red shirt. Get it now. Don't wait. And wear it all over the place. Just like we had seas of shirts uh, that said uh, Hillary for prison, and it really showed the media how powerful the liberty movement was. We're doing the same thing here, both the Hillary for prison shirt and the Bill Clinton rape shirt available at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, and the presenter of the Bill Clinton rape shirt that's moving mountains right now is Roger Stone. We have multiple confrontations a day with Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Obama. It's one of the top national stories. The Bill Clinton is a rapist movement. Uh, just briefly, because I have three other points to hit with you, Stone. That has been wildly successful, has it not, thanks to the listeners. It has. It is demonstrates that one person can make a difference. We have broken through the mainstream media blackout on Bill Clinton's history as a rapist. Now people are yelling at his rallies. 
uh, as uh, uh, starting today at the Stone Cold Truth, and I believe shortly at Infowars in the store, you're going to be able to get the Bill Clinton, the official Bill Clinton rape whistle. So if you read that Bill Clinton's coming to your town to campaign for Hillary, get you and your compatriots out there with your official Bill Clinton rape whistles to keep this issue straight, in, uh, you know, right in front and, of the and, and let's be clear, Roger is selling uh, these to us at cost. We're going to then sell them at cost, so is he. This is a war, powerful whistle that says Infowars.com on it, StoneColdTruth.com to spread the word. And then you can take over at events with these. We're in an info war. They send people to disrupt our rallies and beat people up. We're going peacefully with the First Amendment, legal and lawful. And it's not bad to make money. I'm just pointing out, since you mentioned it, we had a million of these. There's 400,000 left. We're selling them at cost. 100 stickers is, is like $17. That's at cost. Hillary for prison 2016, info wars. So... You stick these up in legal and lawful areas, folks, and spread the word. Now, Stone, getting back to you. Uh, again, those are at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals. Uh, and I don't care where you get the rape whistles or where you get the rape shirts, StoneColdTruth.com. We're in a war. Uh, he sells them to us at cost. It doesn't matter where you get them. Just get them. Now, Roger Stone. We're, by the way, selling Hillary shirts right now at cost, too. It's a total war. We're all in. And, and again, that's how desperate it is. We're not in there. We're not in this for our normal capitalist principles. We're in this to break the the roadblock being set up by the mainstream media on this issue. That's right. Things are so desperate. The consummate capitalists aren't even trying to make money at this point. Okay, folks. Because we understand we've got to make money to fund ourselves and continue. But right now, just we're all in. So, so Roger, the three points you wanted to hit finally. A. How is Trump doing? Uh, he seems to have gotten a lot hardcore after he got set up in the first debate. How is he doing? Am I correct that he seems to be as strong as yet? Well, he's liberated because um, perhaps uh, some around him have finally figured out that the establishment Republicans, who were at least some of them were temporarily pretending to be his friends, uh, don't wish him well. Uh, and there he no longer has to defend the, the elite Republican leadership in Washington, which, as you know, uh, is just as responsible for the lousy conditions of the country, uh, home and abroad, as the Democrats, the, the Bushes and the Clintons, and their ilk working together brought us to where we are. So uh, I think he feels liberated. Very, very exciting. You know, the media tries to spin it that he's a loser because he's fighting with the Republicans. These are the horrible establishment that have been selling us out. I wouldn't support him if the horrible rhinos and neocons liked him. It, 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 I mean, it's a... It, 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 yeah. Uh, Roger's got to go here in a moment, but Roger, finishing up then with the final point uh, we were going to hit on. Yeah, I, I still think that um, the greatest danger here, as the uh, as the as the uh, rotting, teetering, uh, you know, two party duopoly uh, uh, sways in the wind just before collapsing, is that they will try to steal this election. So I, I ask people again to go to stopthesteal.org. Uh, join. We need your hours. We need your manpower. We, we need boots on the ground uh, because the Trump campaign does not have the infrastructure necessary to guard these polls. Uh, the Republicans are working against us in places like Ohio and parts of Florida, and we can only fill these gaps with rank and file patriot citizens who want to step forward and try to fight uh, what I think is uh, a coming effort to steal this election. And let's be clear, we even if we can't stop it, documenting with exit polls, with video cameras, catching fraud, if we get 10 or 15 big stories, which we'll get if they steal, we'll get more, it will devastate them, it will backfire, and then there'll be a huge investigation. Trump will be catapulted in on the recount. If we had Scalia, he's dead. So final question, you told me during the break, that this move to go after Carlos Slim and the New York Times was genius. Give us 60 seconds on that. Yeah, I think there's there's one missing piece of the Trump message. Carlos Slim, the owner of the New York Times, the man who has the largest single phone contract with the United States government, yes. is the single biggest contributor to the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative. It, it connects jobs. This is why the New York Times is putting a women on a on who they were assaulted by our Trump, but have no proof. And uh, this is why this has been so extraordinarily biased uh, in its coverage. Now, I never expected them to be friendly, but they've, they've shredded any pretense of objectivity. Uh, and uh, Slim is, uh, he is the ultimate globalist. Slim is a Mexican billionaire 
uh, paid no taxes to the New York Times last year, just like Donald Trump, using the exact same deduction. But you don't read about that on page one. It's incredible. All right, Roger, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Great to be here, Alex, as always. Victory or death? That's right. That's what uh, Colonel Travis said at the Alamo in 1836. We sit here today watching all this over-the-top tyranny, and I've told my reporters this over and over again, not that I need to. I told them, we don't twist information. We don't spit in information. The truth is what's powerful. And we make a mistake on something, we come out and we admit it. And we do sometimes. Paul made a mistake a few days ago where it looked like Hillary said, you know, that she, quote, hates real Americans. But if you read it, it's kind of double speak. It's like, I know Hillary hates to, you know, talk about real Americans. And then they said, well, we meant it like she's sick of using that cliche. Okay, I'll take that. I'll say that we stretched it. You know, we want to be dead on. Because, see, when you start lying to people, you lie to yourself. When you start getting things wrong and then not correcting it, you, you, you make a mistake. You turn it into a lie when you don't admit it. I really want to tell the truth. I really want to treat people like I want to be treated. And I've been telling you this for a couple of years. And now it is absolutely, completely, and totally out in the open. It's naked. And that is Russia and the state of Russia and the state of the geopolitical machinations and the grand chessboard uh, board stratagem of Zbigniew Brzezinski where they lay out their plan. I mean, it's not like I'm just coming up with what they're going to do and then they do it. People go, wow, you're really smart. They admit 95% of what they're going to do. And that's why I'm sitting here in horror as they have Pentagon military doctrine now saying we can have a survivable nuclear war and maybe we should just go ahead and have it. And then we've got all the moves to stir that up and cause it. And now it's gone from being in the Russian news and the European news, because they're right next door to it, to in our news, look at these headlines. This, and, and this is out of Reuters. See, not Alex Jones. Oh, the big fear monger Alex Jones, huh? Word for word what I told you a year ago. Now you're looking at it. Exclusive. Obama aides expected to waste Syrian military options today, including military attacks on Russian targets inside Syria. There's another one, Infowars.com, great boiled down by Michael Steiner, economic collapse. World War III, Barack Obama could take a major step towards war with Russia today. Nuclear war imminent as Russia, that's a quote, tells citizens to find out where the closest bunkers are and has a 40 million person evacuation. We mentioned that last week there. Meanwhile, don't worry, though, Dutch court upholds hate speech case against far-right MP who just criticized Muslims stabbing people. <laughs> you can't make this up. So, we've got all that. We've got Donald Trump raising $160 plus million dollars for the Republicans. They're supposed to give him half of it for his TV ads. They've given him zero. They've all run off with the money. Paul Ryan, Trump's supposed to run the RNC. They just don't follow the orders and just keep the money. Look at that. Look at that headline. And he goes through all the numbers here. Wow. I mean, you talk about the fix being in. This is total criminal fix. And Trump is just standing up in the middle of it, telling the truth, telling it just like it is. He's not lying. He doesn't exaggerate. He just, it's, it's so bizarre to watch one of his speeches, and it's basically all true. Unless he talks about codes for iPhones. He just doesn't know a lot about technology. He's like, you got a warrant. Open the door. It's, it's not that. They want the back door to everybody's phone. And he's wrong about torture. You know, the fact that he's so honest, though, it's like refreshing. Okay, you're wrong, but on a few things, but you're honest. They all lie and do it. It's just, it's so refreshing. And folks, I got invited by the Republicans and the Democrats before that to work with them. I got invited to the governor's mansion. The governor will be watching tonight when he was running for president. You know, he likes you. You know, sent folks over to the office. 
And then I didn't say nice things about George W. Bush. I mean, that's all they do is just collect talk show hosts like they're collecting tea sets or something. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those people. It's not me. But, I mean, I, 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 I could be in Hollywood. What I'm saying is I'm not trying to like Trump because he's patted me on the head. I, I like Trump because the whole new world order is against him. From the communist Chinese, the biggest murderers in history, to the Saudi Arabians, to the creepiest murders in history probably, right through to every dictatorship and drug dealer and slime bag and parasite you can imagine. And it's all because he isn't out to screw us. So they misrepresent everything he says, and it's sick. When I come back from this piece I'm going to play, we're going to get into this nuclear war situation. But this is such a big thing. I almost want to just get like a briefing room with a big world map somewhere here in the office and just do like an lectern with my facts and just give people geopolitical breakdowns and then historical breakdowns because, I mean, it's reached the point of beyond even having a radio or TV show. I mean, I thought about just doing like an hour a day briefing or something where I just brief the news and cover the biggest threats I think are of a concern instead of just trying to, you know, cover this much news and inform people that also make it interesting. I, everything's so horrible and dangerous now. It's a wonder I'm even sitting here still on air and having hot tails with my kids because, man, let me tell you something. I look at my eight-year-old daughter especially. She's so little. And I just feel like a guilty bastard for not working with the rest of the family to get the hell out of here and get to the Southern Hemisphere. I don't say that for effect. I mean, I I lose sleep now, and I, I've never felt guilty in my life, but my flesh, my love of my kids says, get, this country's gone, it's demonic, it's broke back, it wants to fail, it wants to lie, it wants to be evil, and just get out of here. But you can't get out of here. The whole world's under the control of this. Yeah, you could buy some time, maybe 5, 10, 20 years, whatever. Maybe you'll survive in the Southern Hemisphere, a big nuclear war in the North, probably not. I ju I'm just telling you the struggles I go through because the Pentagon has been ordered to prepare for nuclear war with Russia and move the weapons into place, and we're run by psychopaths and Trotskyites that have a big raging you-know-what for Russia, and it, it's, just, it's a bad situation. And only being really concerned about it, like the Pentagon's gone and said they're concerned, Congress doesn't care. They somehow don't get it. They just think, we've got such superiority that you can... You don't win a war. It's like if a guy, he's going to get to shoot you six times with a 357 Magnum at 10 feet away, and you're going to shoot him six times with a Barrett 50 Cal. There's, you're both dead no matter what. And they just, they're, they just don't get it because they've given delusion. They, they've turned themselves over to whatever this world system is, this spirit. It is a spirit of of just being dumbasses, being losers, being unfaithful jackassery, I guess is the word. Invented a new word. It's asshattery, but jackassery, the delusionites. I, I don't know what you call it, but I'm not just going to rearrange deck chairs here on a Titanic, okay? I mean, you got all these foreign nationals involved in our elections. The UN's coming in with, with the EU to take over the election. I mean, even if you hate Donald Trump, you ought to vote for him just for basic sovereignty. But you're like, oh, I don't care if the U.S. is run by foreign nationals. Big deal. <laughs> oh, man. You have no sense in your brain if you think that. All right, I'm going to play this report. This is my response yesterday when I had promised my son for months I would take him with family hunting. And we did do it. I've canceled it several times, but I still shot a video in a low res out in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful West Texas. Only a day and a half we drove out there. Drove back last night. And uh, I was just reading the New York Times when I got back to the little lodge where they did have a little bit of internet attacking. And I thought I should respond to that because that's directly from the New World Order. That's a that's the mouth of Sorum. So I wanted to respond to that. I'll come back with the nuclear war news. And we have one of uh, Bill Clinton's uh, former girlfriends just to give you, you know, a mindset from somebody that didn't say she got raped. But, you know, breaking it down, Hillary, the other woman, Dolly Kyle, I thought was an amazing interview. Uh, over the phone. She's here in person uh, coming in. But right now, let's go ahead and go to this report. My response to Hillary, Obama, uh, and the New York Times. Here it is. It's said by many in the media that the New York Times is the most prestigious outlet in the world. They certainly were respected 50, 60 years ago, but they are one of the most discredited outlets in the world now. But they are still the main vehicle with the Washington Post competing in second place for establishment disinformation. 
The special interests that have captured this nation are on record running the New York Times. And there have been four different waves of confirmed WikiLeaks just the last few years where we have Hillary Clinton particularly giving orders to the New York Times. They go to her before they even run stories. Uh, she controls what news they put out, not just on her, the Democratic Party, but on many other issues. So I'll hand this to Hillary. When you get into the emails and stuff, she actually is running the show and is trying to establish an authoritarian system in this country. Now, this is my response to Hillary and to the combine she represents and to the New York Times, as well as Obama, who's been attacking me and basically implying that I'm a crazy person. I come on air with a lot of energy, and I am almost hysterical at times because I read the documents, I read the statements about the TPP, openly admitting world government. Uh, Hillary's own emails have come out saying she wants to ban guns via executive order, but that's in the news in major papers saying ban the Second Amendment. They just live in this world where they deny all this is going on, like saying Obamacare is free or you can keep your doctor, and then they go on Charlie Rose and laugh at us. Jason, I think I Lovett wrote the line about, um, if you like your insurance, you can keep it. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Huge impact. And you know what? It's so true. No. Yeah. But so you can call me a conspiracy theorist all day long. You try to use me as the poster boy to say, look, people that cover these issues aren't credible. I'm the poster boy that got all this information out. I'm the person that did it in a theatrical way, but always told the truth to break through to the public who was in a coma. And that's in the new WikiLeaks as well. Keep them dumbed down, keep them in the dark, keep them disinterested, uh, keep them distracted, keep them diverted. Thank God they're not paying attention like Gruber famously said about Obamacare. The lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. When I read the latest New York Times article today, I could spend weeks just looking at the disinformation, the spinning, uh, the taking out of context to try to discredit myself, Donald Trump, and populist movements worldwide. And I understand why. The New York Times represents global corporatism, a modern form of anti-free market crony capitalism that is the modern colonialism. And they're using third world populations to basically wage economic warfare now on the first world and bring both down. And they write white papers about this. Separately, when I was reading the story, I saw another link to an article saying that Donald Trump is panicking because he's losing the race and claiming there's election fraud. Again, you illustrate your hypocrisy and wonder why you're basically bankrupt if you didn't have a foreign Mexican owner. And that's that... The federal government says the Russians are hacking the election and taking it over, so they're federalizing it. This weeks after I came out two months ago and said Homeland Security is planning to federalize it to steal it from Trump because he's really 10 to 15 points ahead. Then the president comes out and says, I'm crazy that the feds aren't involved in elections, but then takes them over two and a half, three weeks later. And it's, it's, it's these contradictions on every point. You're announcing world government. You're announcing you want our guns. You're announcing that the family unit's bad. It's in white papers and textbooks that they're trying to get, get rid of the nuclear family to lower population numbers and promoting homosexuality. I'm not making a judgment of homosexuality. I'm a libertarian, for God's sakes. It's that you're saying you're attacking the family. Don't attack gays, but don't attack the family. That's all I'm saying. But to address a few of the points, they act like I'm a kook for saying the government wants to take our guns, and I went on Piers Morgan and said 1776 will commence again if you try to take them. And then they go, oh my God, he warns of the end of humanity because of nuclear weapons and GMOs and human-animal hybrids. I mean, top scientists across the board, major institutions say the planet's in more danger of nuclear war or biological Armageddon than we've ever been. But again, they make it look kooky and weird to be concerned. I'm a father of three. I'm concerned about our mainstream media waging war on independent press and Obama and the Republicans working with them going after whistleblowers. I talked about NSA spying with specifics with whistleblowers 20 years ago. The truth is people that have attached their wagon to this corrupt establishment are on the wrong side of history. I've been right. I've told the truth. Infowars.com has been a trailblazing institution that's grassroots. We're not all hoity-toity and polished with teleprompters like you are. But even when I'm on the road in a hotel room visiting family, I'm ready to come in and hit back and take action because I know the people deserve the truth, and I believe in humanity, and I want to turn the tide. 
The truth is Donald Trump is a patriot as well. The truth is you guys are crucifying him for doing one one hundredth what Bill and Hillary Clinton have done. But let me address just one more of the other points that I raise that I could say has some legitimacy. And that's the criticism that I'm saying Hillary and Obama are literal, actual demons. Folks, I've been told this by high up folks. They say, listen, Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. I never said this because the media go crazy with it, but I've, I've talked to people that are in protective details. I mean, they're scared of her. And they say, listen, she's a freaking demon and she stinks and so does Obama. And I go like, what? Sulfur. They smell like hell. Now, to be specific, I'm not saying they're from the pit of hell. I can see how that comes off and it's a legitimate criticism. I don't believe they actually, again, float around like Ghostbusters, like Slimer or something and are from a literal hell. But... In a allegory way, they might as well be demons from hell. Hillary funding jihadis and ISIS on record all over the world, killing Christians, supporting radical Islam that oppresses women, uh, doing all the horrible things she's done, treating her staff horribly, uh, saying, I came, I saw Gaddafi die, destabilizing Africa, uh, selling tainted blood. Uh, look at that in the 80s and 90s out of Arkansas when they were basically co-governors and knowing it had HIV in it. I mean, the crimes of the Clinton are legion. These are nasty people. Her own constituents can't stand her. She stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Stanford University certified that six months ago. So yes, she is a demon in the fact that she's like a serial killer. You know, we say Jeffrey Dahmer is a literal demon. We don't mean he's from the pit of hell, but he's a literal stinking demon. You know, we have famous essays where they were talking about treating the, uh, you know, Irish so bad. They said, why don't we just go ahead and, you know, raise their kids and sell them as, as you know, raw meat. That was satire. So it went into the edge of satire, and I should have been a little bit clearer. But I don't retract the fact that she behaves like the metaphysical, historical demons we read about in history books or the Bible. The truth is the establishment media is a dying dinosaur. The credibility of the system can never be gotten back because we're run by multinational offshore corporations that brag about it. We're now under foreign treaties we never even ratified. We're going under global government. And so I was right about that and hundreds of other issues. I have credibility, you don't. And I know it upsets you with your big fancy high rise buildings and all your big titles that people know you've basically on average have it out to get them. So Obama, Hillary, the New York Times, all of you, you have chosen your lot. This is who you are. There's still time to try to back out of it and redeem yourselves, but something tells me you're not going to do it. But there is time for other people in the media and the power structure to realize globalism isn't taking us to a good place. And whether you like Alex Jones or hate him, hey, I'm just a regular guy, and I'm trying to get people's attention to cause a debate on these issues. And that's what we cover at InfoWars.com and on my radio show every single day. All right, uh, and that full report's up on InfoWars.com. As we go to break here, just remember this is listener-supported. Uh, I really developed uh, Knockout just because I wanted it because sometimes I'd take a little bit of valerian root or melatonin. I didn't like having a bunch of different bottles of it. So if you just take one thing after a while, it quits working. Well, guess what? Especially now when I can't sleep fighting the globals, they get so wound up. Valerian root, L-tryptophan, melatonin, lemon balm, leaf extract, GABA, and a lot of other amazing compounds for $19.95. The same dose of melatonin is usually $19.95. This is all organic. It's the ultimate sleep. Uh, I, I don't take it but once or twice a week normally. Now I'm taking it a lot more often just because stuff's so crazy. I get such better sleep. It's available and it's 25% off for a limited time. That ends after the weekend. Take advantage of that at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda. And the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. And their agenda is to elect crooked Hillary Clinton at any cost, at any price, no matter how many lives they destroy. For them, it's a war. And for them, nothing at all is out of bounds. 
This is a struggle for the survival of our nation. Believe me. And this will be our last chance to save it on November 8th. Remember that. You know what's incredible about watching Trump's speeches unedited like I do on a routine basis? He gives three or four a day. He has such amazing stamina, so I don't catch more than maybe one a day. And uh, maybe it's 8 o'clock at night. The kids have done their homework. They've taken showers. We've had dinner. And uh, we don't watch a lot of TV. We watch movies a couple times a week or whatever. And, and, and I let them watch a few shows here and there when they've done their chores and done a good job and gotten you know, straight A's. But we'll all just sit down and, and my 8-year-old, my 12-year-old daughter, and my 14-year-old and my son, and I say, what do you want to watch? And they say, we want to go to uh, the Donald Trump channel on YouTube. We want to watch his speech today. And we'll go there and we'll, we'll oh, look, there's five speeches today. Which one would you like to watch? And we'll sit down and we'll watch Donald Trump for 30 minutes or an hour. My children, they all teach you, your kids don't want to listen to you. Your kids don't want to admire you. You study history. You're fighting evil and you're in a tribal situation and, and your kids understand it. All they want to do is do what you say. But they want to get our families destabilized from the beginning, all fighting with each other. Once they get the unnatural dynamic going, once they try to convince the man to act like a child, the woman to act like she's the boss, and get everything destabilized, once that starts, it's like a top, a gyro wobbling. A gyro that's stable is going perfect. But a gyro that's wobbling is out of control. And once kids get it that we're a family, we've got to stick together, we care about each other. And we only care about people that care about us and the people that are truthful and nice. And, and not that my kids are perfect. They're, you know, they're far from enough. I've spoiled them at certain levels. But they win all the everything. I, I mean, it's amazing. Um, he could do it at state level. He wanted to, but we just, he didn't need to. Uh, but, but Rex is now a man. He had been on the air in over a year. He's just been so busy. But he wants to be on air. He's going on air soon. But he looks like he's about 16, 17. He's 14. He's turned 14. And he wins all the big speech debate deals. He wins all the big, I mean, you name it. Um, and I'm not bragging about my kids. It's just that they're confident. They know what's going on in the world. And they got a gleam in their eye. You look at the average kid, that gleam's been stolen from them. And I don't let my kids play video games, folks. I don't let them sit there and just sit there with a smartphone all day and drool. I, I have phones I give to them when they're going somewhere. I want to know what they're at. It's like Big Brother. Well, government's going to watch you. I'm going to watch you, too. Here, go with this. Are you going to do a sleepover? Boom, take this with you. But it's like a weapon. It's like an evil. We roll out for limited uses, you know, because, because we, we have ways of turning that towards good. At least we believe we do. None of us are perfect. But <laughs> it's actually true. The country is done. The world's done. Uh, if, if the Brexit fails... If Europe continues the EU and if Trump doesn't get in, I mean, if nationalism and patriotism doesn't win, because globalism is pure death. Globalism is world government. Globalism is scientific tyranny. It's the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all part of it. History is happening. Donald Trump has said the future of this country surviving is on the line. Not that he's perfect. He'll tell you that. But that the globalists are ending national sovereignty. World government has been announced. And thank God he came along who had the courage to magnify our work, Ron Paul's work, your work. It's now mainstream. And there are nationalist movements around the world moving forward. Notice since Nigel Farage of UKIP, we've been interviewing for 15 years, uh, met with uh, Trump and has actually been staying in the U.S. coaching him since the disastrous first debate. Uh, Trump's gotten 10 times more hardcore against the globalists and how it's about sovereignty and outside interests like Carlos Slim of Mexico, really an Arab, uh, and the communist Chinese and the, and the Islamists, the Saudi Arabians controlling us. Notice Trump suddenly has become laser beam, very powerful. And that's because Farage is basically as informed as I am or even more. I mean, he's, I mean I've had dinner with him. I've known him for years. Uh, he was obviously on the show just a few weeks ago. We've done taped interviews with him. We're going to be talking to him again next week. Farage gets the whole deal. He's the guy that helped begin the fall of the EU. Now, every EU country is demanding a referendum because no one was allowed to have a referendum. You're just, you're just suddenly under the EU because your politicians sell you out. Like Obama's saying, we're under the TPP and the carbon tax, even if we don't ratify it. 
And the media is like, Obama's smart. He doesn't need Congress. He's just going to ratify it. Well, it's not smart to break the law. It's not smart to just have the bureaucracy do whatever it wants. But that's the big widespread, you know, 40,000, 35,000 foot view. It's important to zoom in and do snapshots of different individuals. Now, I'm not one to defend Bill Clinton. But I've been covering the Clintons for 21 years on air. I've been following them for 23 years since they became, you know, husband or well, since that election uh, in 1992, 1993. And Hillary, to me, is the main villain. And I don't say that because that's a campaign strategy. And, you know, we'll, you know, we'll talk about Bill, how bad he is, but how she's even worse. It's the truth. It's come out. She was president already, basically eight years, co-president. She is the one that handled the, quote, bimbo eruptions. She is the one that was well, actually out doing the work and making the money and, 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 and selling the country out, as we see in the Clinton Foundation. Bill's spending most of his time partying, and he does do some work, obviously. He's now a surrogate for her because she's obviously ill. But looking at what just comes out and all the horrible things Hillary does in these WikiLeaks and how she hates the American people is mind-boggling. But we had a lady on, one of the you know, many folks that have been you know, connected to the Clintons who've, who've spoken out, but I wanted to have her here in person. I appreciate her coming down from Arkansas, a lovely lady, uh, both in her looks and also in her demeanor, because she really, I thought, connected with myself and the audience. She's not somebody that says Bill Clinton raped her. She's somebody that dated Bill Clinton, but can speak to the whole situation really from a very honest perspective. But it's now come out, they're calling thousands of former contestants in all of his pageants going back 30 years, and, and they're coming out saying, I'm not going to lie for you, but... They're really going after Trump right now and trying to project onto Trump who Bill Clinton was. So that even becomes a distraction onto who is Hillary. But the book, Dolly Kyle, a political memoir, Hillary, the other woman, forwarded by uh, David P. Shepard, who's a great patriot. He was the head impeachment lawyer who exposed that uh, actually Ken Starr was a ch Chinese agent and well, basically worked for the Chinese. He now officially works for him. So that's been proven. He was the chief investigative counsel for the Clinton impeachment. We should try to get you know, folks from that whole impeachment back on. Uh, we have had the former congressman from Georgia, obviously, on. Uh, but if you're going to talk, tell the whole story, there has to be absolute accountability. That's a Hillary Clinton quote. You're a great writer. Dolly promises me you will never censor anything you might want to say. Bill Clinton, Dolly is keeping her promise not to censor the truth. She is telling the whole truth here, but Hillary will not be happy about it. Hillary is the one being called to account for her lies, shady financial deals, uh, racial discrimination, uh, one chef got killed. The other chefs come out and said it's true. She would just scream N-word and flip out. Foul mouth flip-flopping, destruction of government records from Arkansas to Washington to Benghazi, lack of true feminist credentials, and her decades-long history of attacking many women who were used and abused by her husband, the co-president. I'm going to skip this network break because we have more time uh, with Dolly Kyle here today. But uh, thank you so much for coming into the studio with us. Well, you're very welcome. I'm happy to be here, Alex. You're awesome. Wow. Uh, I mean, I've thrown a lot out there. You should probably just recap for folks that didn't hear you on a few months ago, who you are, what happened, what unfolded. Uh, I ran to you in Cleveland at the RNC as well. And then just your perspective of somebody who's been there since, what, high school or was even earlier with Bill Clinton. Right. I met Billy when I was 11, and he was 12 going on 13. We so met middle on school. Yeah, well, I went to Catholic school, so we didn't break it up like that sure eighth grade but then there were no other catholic schools there but billy was uh we were in hot springs high school together then we graduated in 64 so uh, we're in the same class and yes i am two years younger because i skipped two grades so let's get the bimbo thing out of the way right now okay no bimbo here i am a lawyer well, you don't look like a bimbo and you look amazing for your age <laughs> you look like you're about 45 Oh, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna, no, I'm joking. No. Anyway, um, the important thing is really not so much the fact that I had an adult sexual relationship with Billy, but the fact that I have known him since I was 11 years old. And I am an intelligent, observant person. And I know what's been going on with the Clintons for all these years. So that's what's important. I did not want to write this book, Alex. But when I saw Hillary look into the camera and get that fake sincere look that she has and say that women who've been raped and sexually assaulted should be believed. Okay, that did it for me. I was ready to throw a shoe at the TV screen, but it was a new TV and it wouldn't have done me any good. So I wrote this book instead. And I just started it last year at the beginning. And of the you're year. on record, you know, in the yearbooks with Clinton. I mean, I don't think he's oh, yeah. really, 
He's not denied that he that you were his girlfriend either. Uh, well, actually. I know early on he didn't. Um, it, early on, of course, he didn't. But then I was subpoenaed to testify in the Paula Jones case. And Billy's lawyers wanted me to not testify, not because we didn't have a relationship, but because our relationship was consensual and the Jones case was about sexual harassment. So Billy's own lawyers prepared an affidavit for me to sign saying that our relationship was consensual and they wanted me to file a motion in federal court not to testify because I didn't know about harassment, only about these consensual sex. The problem that Billy's lawyers did not know was that I was going to testify about Billy's sex addiction, which he had confessed to me after, Alex, I found out I was a sex addict and I got into therapy and I told Billy about that as any friend would do. Well, it must be a terrible thing to be a sex addict. Well, actually, Alex, anyone who can have a drink at a cocktail party and enjoy it thinks that alcohol is fine. I have nothing against alcohol. But if you take one drink and you can't stop and you ruin your life, then it's not so great. Absolutely. No, I mean, what is a sex addict? Does somebody just can't control themselves? There are a lot of aspects of it, just as there are different kinds of alcoholics. And I say alcoholics because more people have more experience with that, more knowledge of it. There's an alcoholic who gets up in the morning and has alcohol for breakfast. There's one who doesn't drink until 5 o'clock. There's one who binges on the weekends. There's one who binges every six months. There's all different sorts of alcoholism. But it does not excuse someone driving down the street drunk and killing a person. No, no, I totally agree with you. So, so I mean, Bill Clinton, I mean, is an admitted, like, superstar sex addict. I mean, what's the word on it? It's reportedly up to 10 women a day when he was president. Well, I don't know how many women per day. I do know that once a long time ago, we were discussing Wilt Chamberlain, who was the African-American basketball star who said he'd had sex with 20,000 women. And Billy and I were talking about that, and he said, whoa, that's 10 times more than I've had. And I think he said that with a bit of admiration and a little jealousy. But so he was saying he really had 2,000. Yeah, and let's say he was exaggerating and it was only 1,000. How's that? Better? I don't think so. All, uh, I think all any man or woman wants to find is the, is the right person. And then there's one, and that's who you love. Well, I don't think he knows about love. Well, I can say personally, just raw sex for me is empty. You know, I was a little bit promiscuous when I was younger. Nothing like Will Chamberlain or Bill Clinton. But it just was so empty. And, and for me, sex is really all about the relationship. It should be. And what happened, and I'm not excusing it, but when I was a 16-year-old virgin, I was drugged and raped by one of Billy Clinton's friends. And a rape will change the trajectory of someone's life. Now, sometimes people don't admit it. They don't even admit to themselves what happened in, this, in the effect. Does it tend to either, either person becomes very withdrawn and a spinster or they become wild? Well, that's what I talk about in my book, yes. And again, that's Hillary, the other woman. So, so going back to where you started, that was intriguing. You were suddenly, when was it? You were spurred into action, spurred into the spotlight because of Hillary and the way she was behaving, uh, you know, claiming we should always stand up for women that are assaulted, but then going after uh, Bill's victims. Well, that was just at the beginning of 2016. I mean, I wrote 92,000 words in 65 days of writing. I did take off on Sundays. I also want to say to anyone who wants to start throwing stones right now, that having the affair with Billy was wrong. I have repented, I have changed my life, and I had invited him to do that too, but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, well, nobody's judging anybody for consensual sex, even though it can't get out of hand, and I think you're saying it was out of hand. But Absolutely. No, nobody's judging you for, I mean, that. give me a break. And anybody that tries that, especially the left, they're all, oh, sex, party, all this degenerate stuff, but then they act like, you know, like like these uh, super obsessed, you know, orthodox people when somebody conservative is involved in it. It, it seems like a very, very uh, one-sided situation. Well, it absolutely is. And here's the other thing. Forget the sexual relationship that I had with Billy because my entire family, he's been friends with the Clintons family for years. So I have an inside observation whether or not Billy and I ever had a relationship. Has Bill Clinton got more evil or less evil over time? Oh, my goodness. You know, I didn't know anything was wrong with him until the night in 1974 when he introduced me to Hillary. And that was the night of the Democrat convention in Arkansas. And Hillary had come in from Washington, but I did not know that. Billy called and asked me to pick him up at the airport and wanted me to take him to the um, television headquarters and then to Fulbright headquarters. 
I said, sure. I mean, this was no big deal. We were adults. We were dating. I was divorced at that time. And so it was a totally open sexual relationship. He was also seeing Marla Kreider at the university. And this is pretty had, wild, though. He's got you, a hot blonde going over to pick up his other girlfriend. Well, yeah, but I didn't know that. And so he showed up at the airport. So he's pretty bold. He showed up at the airport with this dowdy-looking middle-aged woman and three guys in suits. And when they got closer, I realized that the dowdy middle-aged woman was just mm, dowdy, but not middle-aged. And Billy said, Dolly, this is Hillary. Hillary, did he tell you Dolly. She, well, did, did, did he tell you she was a CIA officer? Oh, no. No, he didn't say anything about that. And one thing that you need to understand about Billy and all other addicts is that they will tell different people different things so that they never expose themselves, excuse the pun, uh, completely to anyone, but they show different sides of themselves. For example, Billy showed his cocaine addiction to other people, but not to me, because he knew I was very definitely against drugs. So he wouldn't bring that up. He could show his sex addiction to me, because that was okay, because I understood that. So he was a, he was a chameleon? Absolutely. Okay, so we got to this part. It's the first time, 1974, Democrat convention happened in Arkansas. Here comes Hillary with the guys in suits with her. Uh, tell us what happens next. Well, we, my first thought was, oh, dear. Remember the Seinfeld episode with the valet Parker who smelled bad? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I thought, the first thing I thought was, oh, my gosh, I have cloth seats in my car. And believe me, I was worried about my car. But I let this woman get in there anyway. She <laughs> smelled that bad? She really did, Alex. She really, truly did. And I'm not just being tacky. Uh, call me Margaret Mead in Samoa. I had never seen or smelled any woman like that, ever. Did we talk before you got here today? No, why? When's the last time you talked to me? Well, I guess on the radio show? Yeah. A month ago? Because we fly by the seat of our pants. We're just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's a big national... Are you aware of the national controversy right now concerning me? I mean, I mean, the president responded to it. No, I don't think so. What happened? Uh, it's, it was the top story three days ago. I just said from my Secret Service sources, they, and I also talked to people in protective detail from the Pentagon, they said, we don't know what's going on, but Hillary smells like a dead pig. Mm -hmm. And I talked about it, and they said I was completely insane. I said she smells like a demon, and that Obama stinks to high heaven. Oh, I did hear that, yes, about the demon thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what a dead pig smells like. I, I do. Well, the point is they smell like hell. But, but it's funny, but... <laughs> I don't know if you write about it in the book, but wow, that's crazy. I mean, you're bringing up how bad she smelled. I'm just telling you, uh, people are telling me she smells. So what's she smell like? Just I don't know. I'd never smelled anything like that before. I mean, her hair was dirty and greasy and her dress was stained. So I assume it was something on her or in her or she hadn't bathed. I, I, Listen, I, I've I, had I was in two shock. Blackwater people, an army colonel, t secret service just say, we're scared of her. She blows up and screams half the time. Fitch falls down angry, I mean, like a two-year-old, and smells like, and I go, what? They go, it's the worst smell you've ever smelled. And I, it's just, you didn't even know this, and here you are bringing it up. No, because it was the first, one of the first things that I noticed. And who could not notice someone who smelled that bad, especially when they were going to get in my car with cloth seats? That's what I tell listeners. I'm not going to make this up if we're not getting these sources. So, so. Well, ask anyone in Arkansas who met her back then. Uh, you, don't, don't take my word for it. This wasn't just normal hippie body odor. I wouldn't think so. All right, please continue. So what else? So she's a stinking creature arrived? Well, the thing that really bothered me that night, and I started to talk about, you said, is Billy more evil now? You would have to know how important Senator Bill Fulbright was in Billy Clinton's life in order to get this at the level that I do. But when Billy Clinton went to Georgetown as a freshman in 1964, Bill Fulbright gave him a job. Fulbright had been... Uh, I don't know, 64, he'd been 20 years in the, in the Senate from Arkansas at that point. He gave Billy a job. He introduced him to everybody in Washington who was important. When Billy wanted to go to Oxford, Bill Fulbright helped him get the Rhodes Scholarship. He helped him to get into Yale. He helped him to get a job at the University of Arkansas teaching. And then when Billy, in 1974, was running for Congress from the, the 4th Congressional District in Northwest Arkansas. Got a good memory. Huh? It was Bill Fulbright who introduced him to the big money folks who would support that race. So I say all that to say this. The night of May 28th, 1974, the Democrat primary, I picked up Billy at the airport. We went to the TV station so Billy could do a statewide interview, which was the only place you could do that at the time, and maybe still now, I'm not sure. But anyway, 
um, while he was doing the interview, this strange smelling person who I really didn't believe was Hillary. I thought it was some kind of a joke because Billy had told me two years before that he was moving in with a law student named Hillary. She had a place to live. No big As deal. As a toad looking creature with goggle glasses. Uh -huh, it was not pretty. It was not pretty. Smells like a pet of hell. Dirty hair. Mm -hmm. All of that. Anyway. Alinsky worshippers. <laughs> she was watching the election returns. And then when we left the TV station to go to Fulbright headquarters, Billy said, well, we need to go back to the airport. And I said, why? We, we're going to Fulbright headquarters. They're expecting you. you. I mean, you can't know this This man Fulbright was like Billy's father godfather. figure he never had. No, not godfather. Like a father he never had. It was, it was critically important. And Billy said, well, we're not going. Didn't you see the election returns? Fulbright's losing. I said, yeah, sure he's losing. I mean, all the more reason to go over and support him. And Billy said, I don't want to be seen with a loser. And... I felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach. And of course, I wow. thought about, what about this? That's what I always hear is they love to betray their friends now. <sighs> At this point, it begins. Well, yeah, and here's the thing. I was so upset about that. And of course, I didn't realize that Hillary was Hillary. I, seriously, I thought it was a joke. Really, I thought it was a joke. So I didn't realize Billy had kicked me in the gut. Can we pull up a photo of Hillary in college or, or when she worked on the Nixon, anti-Nixon committee? I mean, let, let's pull her up. It looks like a joke. Please continue. Okay. Anyway... I I was devastated to realize that Billy would turn his back on Bill Fulbright like that. I really was. It made me physically sick. The same kind of physically sick I was when I saw Juanita Broderick's interview with Lisa Meyer on Dateline NBC and found out he was also a rapist. And we have those clips when we come back. So to you, it's the dishonor of it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Well, it's funny. You know why Hillary had all those men in suits around her? She was... Oh, no, 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 no. These were Billy's friends. This sure. was not the well, guys in suits then. These were just Billy's point friends. Is, I mean, it's been declassified. She was like a CIA, his controller by the time they moved to England and all the rest of it later. Mm. And it, 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 it's an amazing story. Her dad was like a mob boss in Chicago. We'll be back. I was just talking to Dolly Kyle, and she's nervous to say this, but I was, I was looking at her because I know she went to law school, one of the top folks in her class. She's very successful uh, economically. She didn't want to come out and write this book with World Net Daily Books. She did it because she felt compelled to do it. And she said, well, I mean, I, mean, I was going from memory because I knew that from inside baseball, knowing the publishers, that you basically don't even want any money because uh, they've asked me to publish a book with them too. I've just been too busy, quite frankly. Uh, great publishers over at World Net Daily Books. Get the uh, book, Hillary, The Other Woman, Dolly Kyle. Total credibility. Uh, in fact, let's, we should go through your curriculum vitae uh, for new listeners. You're not doing this to sell a book. You're doing it to try to wake people up and expose what happens if we let these criminals continue uh, to be in power. And you said, well, yes, I can't do it on your show because you're too big. Right. Because I've been telling people, if you can't afford it, I'll send you a copy or send you a check to get it. And you've actually been doing that. But so right. don't do that here. You just want this to get out. You're not doing this for money. You're doing this for honor. So continue with your story. Continue breaking it down. Well, I do want to say this. I did send my publisher a request this morning that to see if we could lower the price of the Kindle version of this book, at least between now and the election. I, there are limitations what you can do with Amazon. Oh, I know. We're selling our Hillary for President shirt at cost. I'm spending the backup money we have because any operation like this has to have backup money. Yeah. But I know it's so serious the last six months. I've hired more people, done more, just put every bit of sale on we can mm -hmm. to try to defeat the globalists, because I can feel in my gut this is such a game changer. We're we're all in at this point. That's absolutely true. I do want to say one more thing about Amazon. My book went to number one on Kindle. I took a screenshot that day. I was, I was so tickled because Hamilton had been number one and I was number two. Hamilton was so huge. And then one day, wow, I went to number one and the next day it was number one. And so I was looking for my number one sticker from Amazon because, you know, once you hit number one, then you can always say I was a number one bestseller on Amazon, right? Forever. Except they wouldn't give me the number one sticker. And I had my publisher call and say, what's the deal? And they said, well, there's more to getting a number one sticker than being number one. <laughs> and my publisher said, so what else is there? Well, that's proprietary information. Which means we decide who, who, who gets that. It's exactly. All, but, but what's coming out this election is how rigged everything is. Everyone should Absolutely. get the book. Hillary, the other woman available on Amazon, worldnetdaily.com. I'm not being paid to promote any of this. I'm doing this to get the word out because this is a very credible lady uh, exposing all of this. Now, now let's walk into where Bill Clinton goes from there, what's happening with these women and why you're speaking out. You mentioned Juanita Broderick we've had on years ago, mm -hmm. and, and then I guess about six months ago, 
Um, here's the first clip. Juanita Broderick uh, supports Bill Clinton rape protest. This is a national movement we launched. It's, it's, it's very successful because they want to send their people, funded by George Soros, to beat people up and start riots. We don't do that. We say legally, lawfully go. And you were telling me you're aware of this movement. Yes, I am. And, and someone sent a tweet about it the other day. And I said, hey, thank Alex Jones for that because you started it. And well, I want to thank the listeners that are going out and doing it. But yes, our, our listeners are who we thank and they're awesome folks. Yeah, apparently so. Well, and it's happening two or three times a day. Obama, Hillary, Bill, and I'm told Hillary was even in the Associated Press. She's getting pissed. In fact, she's saying she may cancel events because of it. Well, of course, because she cannot face truth. This is one of the big things about Hillary. She can't. Let's face talk about her psychology. Yeah. I've had two Secret Service on, FBI on, everybody. They say she won't. She won't give tips. Little people she blows up at. Don't look her in the eyes. And that she she just blows up constantly. What's going on with her? I explain this in a couple of chapters in the book, so it's pretty hard to cover it all right now. But we all know, even from Hillary's own autobiography, what a sad childhood she had with a controlling a drill sergeant kind of father whom she never could please. I also think, and this is completely my opinion, based on what I know about sex addiction, that I believe Hillary was sexually assaulted by a female. I also believe that she was sexually assaulted by a male, possibly someone in military uniform, which is why she hates the military. She hates men. She hates women. She and that's hates in the, you said that like four months ago when you I were on it. I said it, yeah. But it's in the WikiLeaks. She hates the military. Exactly. And I said she hates Americans. She hates everyone, don't you see? Because she hates herself. And you can look at a video of her, turn off the sound, and look at the hate coming out of her eyes. I mean, it's hate. And Well, that's what General Flynn said, former head of Army Intelligence. And I've been told by folks there's a psychological dossier on her, and that's why the Russians have done their own breakdown. That's where everybody's so concerned. They say they believe she'll start major wars, that she hates everyone, and that she is extremely unstable. And General Flynn has said that. He, they believe she's unstable. Well, the other thing, too, about the Russians, it's very interesting that Hillary is now blaming these WikiLeaks on the Russians. And think about that, people. The Clinton Foundation, Hillary, took tens of millions of dollars from the Russians. 35 million, yeah. Yeah. Um, and turned over 20% of our uranium supplies to the Russians. And what Hillary does with the Russians and with everything else, pay attention to this very carefully. Everything that she does, that she says someone else does, like Trump, it's all projection 101. If she says Trump is racist, it's because she's racist. If he says she's controlled by the, he's controlled by the Russians, it's because she's controlled by the Russians. And it was very simple for the Russians, for anyone else, to find out who was behind the WikiLeaks. And if anyone thinks that Seth Rich was killed randomly in a robbery on shot the, in the street, back. shot in the back in Washington, think again, this guy was going to talk to the FBI and anyone who knew anything knew it. Now, here's the other thing. They did not try to hide the fact that this was a hit. I mean, I grew up in Hot Springs. You know, Alex, I've got some great chapters in here. That's about a Hot famous, Springs. that was a real mafia headquarters. It was, it was a wonderful place. <laughs> it's a wonderful place to grow up and, and uh, find out interesting things about people. But here's the deal. This was a hit and they intended for people to know it was a hit because this is one of the ways they intimidate other people. It's like, well, it's like Scalia. Up. They announce the pillows on his head, that there will be no autopsy, the first announcement. Then they put in the news, he was in a secret society there just to demonize him mm -hmm. uh, when it was a hunting society. And now we have Podesta, the chief of staff for Hillary, talking about wet work two days before he died saying, get ready. Well, and look what happened when Vince Foster died. That was more wet work. Died. And Billy supposedly found out about it on Larry King Live. And the first thing he said, now here's this friend of his, since, friend since childhood, maybe since the, the playpen. I think their mothers were friends when they were pregnant from Hope, Arkansas. And the first thing Billy says when he finds out his longtime friend is dead, he says, well, we'll never know what really happened. Really? We'll never know? That's his first reaction. And he's shot in the head with no blood at the scene, obviously taken there. Yeah, and Wrapped that's his reaction. What would your reaction be if one of your longtime friends was committed suicide? I'd, I'd get dizzy. I'd sit there and be, I'd say, really? I'd start crying. Yeah. Well, you're human. But you were saying earlier on, Bill seemed more human. He seems to, am I wrong to say Hillary's the boss, though? From all my research over the years, all the way, it seems to be she's the boss. She found this flawed guy. She made him worse. 
she wasn't a beard for homosexuality. She was a beard for his drug abuse and sex behavior. It's hard to say that she really controls him. I talk about in the book, the attraction was that she is his mean, controlling grandmother. Remember, he was not raised by his mother for the first four or five years of his life. Now, he why does she get all glassy-eyed and keep calling Trump my, my husband? And then she only went off script to talk about me. And I'm not getting on a power trip because I don't want her attracted to me. But when she talks about me, she goes, how does he have such a dark heart? And she kind of gets like, <sighs> I mean, no, I mean, now when she attacks me, she kind of acts all weird. Like, she'll give a speech. She talks about me. She gets real weird. What the hell's going on? It's really creepy. It is creepy, and that's unfortunately not the creepiest thing about her. But so, what do you think of psychology? Is your your lawyer? Well, this is, and you know, I was a psych major before I was I a knew lawyer. That. Yeah, you're a smart lady. So, what do you think's going on with her? Um, she talks about Trump. She starts seeming she seems to get excited. Well, like like she seems a little bit attracted to Trump. I mean, well, I pick up the body language. I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing about Trump. He's a real man. He is a real man. And I think that's what's attracting a lot of people. Just like men were attracted to John Wayne in a way. I mean, you know that he swaggers in and he takes control and he solves the problems. And I think that's what we all recognize that Donald Trump can do. We don't know how he's going to do it. And guess what? He probably doesn't know how either. But this is a successful businessman who knows how to delegate. Well, he's just not out to get us. If they just not out to get us. And look who he chose for a vice president. I mean, look how he turned Mexican president with one meeting for him. Because I know it was said. Little Bird told me he said, "Listen, you've been screwed over by globalism. Let's come together. Let's make both our countries rich. Let's break this multinational collateral system that wants us poor." He came out. The Mexican president was glowing. Absolutely. I mean, that's all we need to do is have prosperity. Yes, and the other thing is, look at his first big decision. Mike Pence, for peace's sake, what a fabulous guy. We I were going to talk Mike about that. Look Florida. how uh, yeah. uh, Chrissy's about to get indicted. Um, we've got uh, former Speaker Genrich coming out against Trump. Look how Pence has been really a stalwart. Uh, he did pick amazing. the right guy. He picked an absolutely because fabulous he's loyal. guy. He's loyal. Well, and he's, he's bright, he's articulate, he's knowledgeable. He is principled. I met him and his wife in Florida last month, and I was very impressed with them, with both of them. I just think that this shows right up front Trump's ability to pick the right people. I'm not groveling because I never act like this, but I mean, is Trump not a godsend? I think so. And, you know, I've, I said, uh, it, I think it was in my Sunday school, I said, you know, for years, a lot of us Christians have been praying for our country, praying, praying, praying. And I believe God has a sense of humor. And it may be <laughs> that Donald Trump is the answer to prayer. He is not the person that any of us. But look at the Bible. Picked. It never was like that. No, it never was. That's exactly it. God always chooses mm, interesting people. And that's what we have here. We we don't have the person who would be the stereotypical hero to come in and go to Washington. But what we have in Washington is a cesspool. And don't get me started on that. The Republicans trying well, to get Well, let's get into more into Bill Clinton, more yeah. into your book. But I want to get into this. Okay. I mean, it's in the emails. They're out to get the average American. They hate their black supporters. They hate poor white supporters. It's like they want to make you dependent, and then they disdain you when they make you dependent. The nastiness of these emails. There's so many thousands. I can't even keep track. How we're going to keep them dumb. We're going to keep them poor. We knew all this, but reading this, it's like, how the hell do you write this and send it to somebody? Like, I want to keep my employees poor. I want poor people. And I want them to, meanwhile, you're like, I'm liberal. Oh, you know, it's just, what the hell? Well, I have a chapter in here in the book called The Plantation Mentality. And that's why I say everything that's happening is in this book. It's foreshadowed. It's foretold. It's explained. The it foundation really is, is there. It is some weird Byzantine sharecropper. It is all, it's all in here because nothing has changed in 45 years. And here's the thing. You talk about something that's racist. How about open borders? How about letting all these people come in here who will work for $4 an hour? What is that doing? Oh, to they're our a African permanent underclass. Exactly. They're, they're the new underclass to be the bottom and then to bring us down. That's right. Whereas and, I want to bring everybody up. And African Americans and women and Hispanics who are here legally are the ones who are going to be the most hurt by this open borders thing, not to mention the rest of us. And then it doesn't bring the other countries up. All, this, all the studies no. are done. Well, they admit the plan is to drive down wages, break us. And why did Mexico build a wall on its southern border? Oh, I know. Once you're informed, it's all hypocrisy. Yeah. So looking at this then, what does your gut tell you about the election? Because we have the internal polls. I told people like three months ago and they said he was starting to lose. He was 10 points ahead. Suddenly he's five points behind us and it's all bull. And then it keeps coming out. None of this is working. He's, he's way ahead. Hillary's panicking. Her internal emails show this. They're, suddenly Homeland Security comes in to save the election from the Russians. 
This is unprecedented. If they try a coup in front of us of a landslide, what does Trump do? Because they're so mad, he says he's going to fight. I hope he does. And what I say is this, Alex, Hillary cannot win this election. Now, she may be able to steal it, but she can not win it. Well, I mean, she has 200 people at her events. He has 30,000. Exactly. I've been he to some Trump events. Oh, my gosh. And they're not just there. The people are not just there. They're, it's like an Arkansas Razorback football game. They're, they're, they're all, they're I mean, they're all, they're they're all around. It's like a big camp out. Absolutely. They're all excited. I mean, by the way, it's people of every race, color, and creed, which makes the media so mad. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, the media coverage stinks. And, you know, there's a chapter in here, uh, chapter 47, Media Magic or how to make a story disappear. And I'll bet you that most people who are watching have no idea that I filed a RICO lawsuit against Billy Clinton and his cohorts back in what, 1998? A federal RICO lawsuit. No one knows that. You know why? Media magic, how to make a story disappear. And Billy filed a motion in federal district court saying that he should not have to answer this case because he was a sitting president and the district court said, sorry, Bubba, you got to answer. And he took it to the federal appeals court and they said the same thing. We don't care if you're the sitting president. This is a federal lawsuit you need to answer. And he took it all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And what do you think? The Supremes ruled unanimously in my favor. And then Lisa Meyer of NBC, who did that fabulous, intense interview with Juanita Broderick about the rape, called me and wanted to interview me on the steps of the federal courthouse in Washington. Okay, great. Lisa called me the night before and she said, Dolly, I'm sorry, we have to cancel the interview in the morning. And That's how the executives kill it. They have a blockade on Danny Williams, his illegitimate son, reportedly. Yep. They have a media blockade on all this other stuff. Look at DrudgeReport.com right now. If you're a TV viewer, radio listeners can go there. DrudgeReport.com. Obama claimed executive privilege and Hillary mess. Now we know it's come out in the emails. They never told us he declared it, but now it's confirmed the White House declared it. He had a gnome de plume, a fake name. That's what the head of the you know EPA had to step down for, communicating with Hillary, working on all these deals outside of the Freedom of Information Act. So they're running clandestine operations against this country. Meanwhile, shock poll, no sign of allegation fallout yet. There's a whole bunch of polls. This is Rasmussen, though. It's not hurting Trump. He's really way ahead. So what does your gut tell you? Dolly Kyle, author of Hillary, the other woman, what are they going to pull? As a smart lady that knows these people, as a constitutional lawyer, been around a while, what's your gut tell you? Because I feel like 24 days out, we are just hurtling towards disaster. I mean, these arrogant, crazy, disconnected, Hillary can hardly go downstairs. She has seizures. She's all whacked out. She's got handlers sending emails about wet work, you know, Scalia. I mean, we're, we've entered the twilight zone. Don't they get, we're not backing down. They just don't know. They're like a 100-ton freight train going up against a 500-ton freight train. Well, Alex, the whole thing is mind boggling because if you believe about the voting machines and the way they can be tampered, and if you believe that the ballots were, you know, already marked for Hillary in a lot of places. That's already and, happening in Florida, New York. No, it's confirmed. Okay. And and look what happened to the ballots for Bernie in California. Oh, but he clearly won. Stanford he, University. He, absolutely. He would have won. So I don't know. And I remember, and I, I talk about this in the book, because this was in Hot Springs in Arkansas when I was a kid, big time. I mean, they sold the ballot boxes at the end of the evening. My mother was a, a what do you call it, poll watcher. And they asked her if she'd like to stay for the barbecue and the auction. She said, what auction? So they said, at nine o'clock, we auction off the ballot boxes, one precinct at a time. Hello. <laughs> and Al Capone yeah. used to sit right there uh, at the, uh, what's that big uh, famous hotel in Hot He Springs? was at the Arlington. They used The Arlington, the fourth sleep, floor. Six, well, fourth or sixth. Whatever, right there, there yeah. on the corner. Yeah, yeah. I've stayed in that room, yeah. yeah. And they would just auction everything off right there. Well, Al Capone actually wasn't there. That was there earlier. This, that yeah, was that, earlier, That yeah. was way earlier. But I'm saying the, the tradition started. Yeah, and, and you know what? Some of my favorite chapters in here are about Hot Springs. People love those. It's good. Dolly Kyle is a constitutional lawyer. I'm so glad we got her here in person. I just love the ladies, you know, that are patriots in this country standing up to evil. She'll be, she'll be with us about 15 minutes the next hour. Then Rob Dew's going to be taking over. Then she'll be a quick guest on the nightly news. She's getting on an airplane back to Little Rock, Arkansas. But since you mentioned her, we've got a few of these clips. Here's Juanita Broderick supports Bill Clinton rapist protest movement. This is Breitbart News. Here it is. Nobody can dispute the fact... At your 
that we need. Well, I, I hope that no one gets hurt during this, but I hope it uh, encourages people to say, why are, why are they saying this? What does Bill Clinton have to do with rape? And then hopefully they'll research and right. find out. Well, I hadn't seen all of that. I just saw the one little There's blip like the 25 beginning. of them now. We can't even keep track but of them. I mean, them. the crowd went crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, they did, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. It's not going too well, is it? And folks stand up. Well, you know, I say it's it's either whatever way you want to look at karma or reaping what you've sown is or a, the chickens coming home to roost. Is a, it's time. It's time. Uh, here's another one with Mrs. Uh, Broderick. Uh, Hillary tried to silence me on Bill Clinton's right, but now they're saying they fear for their lives. We got Podesta talking about wet work in emails now before Scalia dies. Okay, so here it is. You saw Bill Clinton weeks later. Yes, that was still in this period of shock and wondering what had happened and how I could have been so stupid to have allowed something like that to happen. Still blaming yourself. Still blaming myself. I'm just still blaming myself. And I realized that I have information that needs to go back to the campaign because I had not returned to the volunteering and you know putting yard signs up asking for donations and things like that so I found about three to four checks to the Clinton campaign they weren't but for 25 or 50 dollars they were small checks and then uh, some list of people who were still going to donate so I asked Norma that was the lady that was with me at the time if she would run up to that event with me and I think she's the one that went with me. And we went up there uh, before, long before the fundraiser was to happen. This was a fundraiser in a, a, the home of a local dentist. Correct? Yes. Uh -huh. um, for Bill Clinton running for governor. Right. Did you know that he was going to come and that he was going to show up with Hillary? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that I knew that, but that's why we went 30 minutes early, so I could give the lady from Little Rock the checks and the list, and then we were going to get out of there. And they come in early from the kitchen area, and uh, just before they do... They uh, would be Bill and Hillary. Bill and Hillary Clinton. And just before they do, a gentleman who had driven them from the airport comes straight over to me. He was a very... He, he, he was supporting Clinton, but he didn't know what had happened to me, even though he was a friend. And he said, the topic of the conversation all the way from the airport was about you. And that startled me. And I knew I had to get out of there. Well, just as he moved, here comes Hillary straight for me and starts, she gets to me and she starts saying, I just want to thank you for everything you are doing in Bill's campaign and it's so nice to meet you and all of these things so i just nodded and told my friend let's go and i thought somebody from behind had grabbed a hold of my arm but it was her she grabbed a hold of my arm and my hand and she pulls me into her and she says with this very angry look on her face which had been so pleasant seconds before and in a low voice says do you understand Everything you do. And that's right. 24 days. Dolly Kyle, Hillary, the other one in the book available at Amazon.com, you name it. Get it. Give it to people out there that are undecided. Explain to them what's happening, the stakes we're facing. We've never seen the entire establishment lined up against somebody like Donald Trump. Dolly, other Clinton stories you want to tell. The book's obviously amazing, but people need to understand it here on the air today. Separately, thoughts about this election. I'm scared. If I didn't have children and grandchildren, probably might not bother me so much. I'd just go live on an island somewhere. But I have to say this. My daddy was a United States Marine. When I was two years old, he put me up in a very high swing and I was scared. And I said, oh, daddy, I'm scared. I'm scared. And he said, Marines get scared, but we do it anyway. And I'm not saying that I'm scared of the Clintons. I know what they do. And I know who's got my six. But I have to tell you that there's too many scared people out there. 
Hillary is a terrorist. A terrorist achieves political aims through threats, violence, and intimidation. She's been doing this for 45 years since she intimidated Marla Kreider at the University of Arkansas in 1974. Nothing has changed about that except the scope is bigger and worse. And if you think that we are a bunch of conspiracy theorists, well, Alex may be, but I'm not. I'm just telling you the absolute truth. Well, you personally experienced. are vicious. And they attack different people different ways. We know about Kathleen Willey and the, and the missing cat and the threats against her children. And Sally Miller threatened to break her legs. They did something different with me. They planted false stories about me in national publications. And why did they do that? Because they knew I was an award-winning lawyer and my reputation was the most important thing to me. What someone forgot was that I am so big on ethics. And again, I'm not a goody two-shoes in my personal life, don't get me wrong. But as a lawyer, by golly, we're officers of the court. We need to do things right. And three weeks after I graduated from law school, I quit my first job over an ethics issue. And this is the most unethical, the most ethically bankrupt person, as I know, has ever run for president of these United States. And if we're going to save our United States, we better... Hope to God that Donald Trump can help us do it because Hillary Clinton is going to take us to the dogs. Dolly Kyle, uh, and I, I mean, I get the joke. I don't mind it. They just use this term like, if I know they're going to take over the election, I have sources. I say, look out, they're going to take over the election. The president has to respond, says we won't. Two weeks later, they do. A conspiracy is t two people or more deciding to work together to basically scam somebody. Mm -hmm. in, in, in layman's terms, we've been proven right about all this. Yes. They just use the term conspiracy theory to shut down critics. Oh, don't listen to them. They're conspiracy theorists. Exactly. We don't listen to them. But I look at the Clintons and the, and the power structure behind them. Don't they get that their credibility is very low? Well, I don't know that they do because they're pathological liars. And pathological liars believe their own... PR, shall we call it, um, pathological liars can pass a lie detector test because they believe it. And again, what I said about Projection 101, when Hillary talks about a vast right-wing conspiracy, hello, it's because there's a vast left-wing conspiracy. She is projecting that of course on you is. They admit and everyone one. else. And I was being facetious when I said that. There are oh, a lot I don't of mind it, but I mean, what makes Hillary tick then? From your law and psychological background? What? I, I'm telling you, as I said in the book, she is addicted to power and money and more money to get more power, and that's all it is. And the reason she's a globalist is that she wants the United States of America to be absorbed into a global economy, and she can be empress of the world, not just president of the United States. So it's the a pissing contest. Person. She wants to mount her head on the wall. She absolutely does, and she doesn't care about being president any more than she cared about being a senator or being a secretary of state. If she cared about the job, she would have made something happen. She would have had a few accomplishments. This is a woman with an empty resume. I mean, her time at the secretary of state's office, besides the disaster she caused in North Africa and in the Middle East, Otherwise, it's just a travelogue. The woman traveled a million miles and did not do anything for the United States Constitutional lawyer, of Dolly Kyle, former... Girlfriend of Bill Clinton, who knows Hillary, straight ahead, the final segment, the data dump. You have the floor. When we return in three minutes to cover every other angle you want America to know, with only 24 days left until this epic historical election. Ladies and gentlemen, we have bumper stickers, 10, 20, up to 100 at cost. 100 like 17 bucks. Hillary for President 2016, Infowars.com. You know if she ends up suing the election, the fight just begins. We're not giving up. Ron Paul couldn't get one co-sponsor 20 years ago. It was out at the Fed. Now it's passed the House, set to pass the Senate very soon. Get these, post them everywhere. The Hillary for President shirt, which we invented, is limited edition. It's at $9.95. That includes shipping. That's at cost. When that shirt's gone, it's gone. This is the last printing of them. Uh, don't tread on me, Hillary. Lock her up. That's a one print uh, made in America, limited edition. So I don't want to say this funds our operation because it's all at cost. Uh, what does fund us is getting our great uh, probiotic, Biome Defense, the very best out there. Uh, getting the incredible Selenium, 23% off, or no, excuse me, 25% off. Knockout was 23% off last week on DNA Force. 25% off on Knockout, that's just Valerian Root, uh, L-Tryptophan, uh, of course, uh, melatonin, and a bunch of other ingredients. Very healthy, great way to give your brain you know, natural deep sleep every night. That funds the operation. That's 25% off. That ends this weekend. InfoWarsLife.com for the supplements. InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com for non-GMO seeds, books, films, you name it. That is the main site, InfoWarsStore.com or always call toll-free seven days a week.
365 days a year, 24 hours a day as well. Uh, we can answer your calls and take your order. You are funding this operation that allows us to do this. It's true independent media. The globalists are so scared. Bill and Hillary, a few years ago when Judicial Watch at World Net Daily, the Western Journalism Center sued. Uh, they got the documents. Uh, they were obsessed with controlling new media, not letting them ever have an economy, not letting them ever sell anything. Demonize them selling a book. Demonize them getting advertising. Don't let them have an economy or the conspiracy theorists will overthrow us. And they were even saying shut down new new mainstream media. I mean, well, guess what? You failed. So are we going to win this part of the war, this battle? I don't know. But we're gaining ground each time. Exponential. It's an incredible time to be alive. Support the broadcast. Pray for us. Spread the word. Send out the podcast links, the video links, the articles. You're the power. I don't just say that patronizing. Like, you're the power. You are the oxygen, the blood, the brains, the, the guts, the bones, everything, the huevos that make this happen. So I want to salute you, the viewers and listeners, Infowarstore.com. Thank you for the support. Now, the book, Hillary, the Other Woman, available at WorldNetDaily.com, WNE.com, Amazon, you name it. But, but, but get it at WorldNetDaily. You can actually make a few dollars there instead of an Amazon who actuaries it all out for Monopoly. Uh, Dolly Kyle. We've got 10 minutes left. You've got the floor looking at camera four to address the public about knowing Hillary and Bill for so many years. Well, 92,000 words in this book, and I couldn't read a chapter in 10 minutes. I really strongly advise everyone to get this book and read it because everything is in here, and it's like a cheat sheet for you to know what's going on and what has always been going on with the Clintons. Chapter 46 is called The Big Problem. And the big problem is that the problem is so big. Although this book is written in short chapters, chapter 46 is 11 pages long because it is an alphabetical list of the scandals of the Clintons. Not explained, just an alphabetical list of them. You need to know that. In chapter 47, the media magic, how to make a story. And you dedicate here. your book to uh, uh, victims of rape. Uh, survivors. Survivors, and there's a difference because there are a lot of people who are still victims of rape and sex abuse. And I intend after this election to continue to talk about this because it's a scourge on our country. Some people have survived, some people are thriving, some people have gotten healing, and some people, like Billy and Hillary, have not gotten healing and they are projecting their problems onto the American public and ultimately to the world. I want to say this I spent almost 10 years in Dallas working in the low-income communities trying to help low-income homeowners with housing issues. I got 350 volunteer real estate lawyers to work with us in this endeavor. We worked with Habitat for Humanity and 50 other nonprofit organizations trying to get housing. And I will tell you that African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and white people who lived in the housing projects, the ones I met, wanted to get out. They didn't want a bigger handout. They wanted out. And Hillary... It's not white flight. You go out and people are getting away from government. Away from uh, black, white, Hispanic. They're getting away from it. They're running. They, There are a few people, of course, who are on welfare, who want to sit there and watch TV and not do anything else. But there are so many people who want jobs. And that's what Donald Trump is talking about. Jobs. And Hillary... Well, she Clinton, can flip one switch and do. Well, Hillary Clinton talks about jobs. And when she was running for the Senate, she said she would get 200,000 jobs for upstate New York. Now, I have been in upstate New York a lot, and I love the Adirondacks. In fact, I was just there Beautiful. in July. But guess what? There's not 200,000 new jobs in upstate New York. And first off, it was a ridiculous thing to say, but she still says it. So what I would advise people to do is pay attention. If Hillary says something bad about Donald Trump, that is projection. It is about herself. And if she says she accomplished something, I hate to tell you, she's lying. She will claim that she got health care for children. She's lying. Well, it's even admitted that she, like, wrecks everything she touches. Why is that? Because she is incompetent. She hates people. So how can you hate people and get anything accomplished? You need to work with people, as I did with Lawyers for Affordable Housing, to get 350 volunteer lawyers. You think it's hard to run a company with 350 employees? Try 350 volunteers, okay? So you have to be able to work with people, and she cannot do this. She is racist. And everything she says about racism is projection. I was about to say her chefs are coming out, not the one they killed, but the other one is saying she just scream N-word. And that's what I heard about all this. 
And then separately, they say one of the new wiki things they're going to release is a tape of her just screaming and yelling. And I've, a lot of folks have told me, did you ever hear her do that, or what was the word on that? I never heard her personally do this. What I heard was Billy talk about the warden doing this. And the warden was his, uh, shall we say, pet name for his wife? <laughs> the warden. So you kept, you, we were friends with him or kept seeing him after he was married? Both. Both. I mean, here, so here's about the warden. Well, the warden was Hillary. And when I maybe would go to see him at the governor's mansion, uh, one of the troopers would call and say, the warden's not gone yet. Because they kind of picked up on it and they liked that too. So everything that you read uh, by former Secret Service, former Arkansas State Police, people talking about Hillary and the way she is, believe it, people. It is true. And the thing of it is, her actions are so egregious. How could you believe it? Again, the big problem is that the problem is so big. Who can wrap their minds around it? Except someone who grew up in Hot Springs or maybe Chicago or New Orleans. But this is not normal for America, and it is not the way the United States should be. The Clintons are trying to turn the United States into a third world country. And speaking of third world countries, look at Haiti. They stole millions and millions of dollars that was sent to the Clinton Foundation for the Haitians. 90, 90, 96%. Yeah, and, and the, the Haitians are picketing the Clinton headquarters in New York. Is anyone covering that? We, we just sent a cargo plane, I haven't told listeners yet, they're going to come back in a couple of days. I don't want to blow all the shit. They're about to take off. The Haitians all hate the Clintons. They know they sold billions, they're saying. And it, we've got government officials, all of it. I mean, th these people are crazy. They are. And it's, it's mind-boggling. And it does sound a little bit crazy to talk about them because their actions are crazy. So I agree. We're not the it. crazy ones. We're no. covering the crazy ones. We're, that's exactly right. But it makes us sound crazy to talk about these people. Why would she have the 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 crazy will to keep 96 percent 97 percent it varies but she gave like three percent of the money they got for haiti to the, how could you do that i mean i don't know i mean i think back to that comment was it uh henry ford someone said how much more money do you need or what is it you want and he says more more that's what the clintons want more you know why there is no end to an addict's need okay and Donald Trump, when asked what was one of Hillary's good traits, was she's a fighter. Yeah, she's a fighter. Look at her website. See how many times she used the word fight. That's all she knows how to do is fight. She can't think. She can't cooperate. But even though America gives her all the power, she hates this big animal she's riding. She, she does. She does. And I, I hate to say it, but I spent a lot of time in this book explaining that. And if you understand the foundational problems that Billy and Hillary have, then you can understand what they're doing. Well, she does seem like a mental do. midget because when she talks about Trump, she goes, my husband needs to. She goes, oh, or he has a dark heart. Why does he do it to me? She's not just acting. She seems mentally ill. Well, in Chapter 50, uh, there's two main things in Chapter 50 that I talk about. One is the Clinton truth suppression techniques, which I got from D.C. Dave Martin. Um, and they're on number one with me, which is ignore me. So if they ignore me, I don't exist, and it's not a problem. But there's 17 truth suppression techniques that the Clintons use, and you should know what they are. Well, one and of them is wet have, works. Yeah, and then you'll have fun sort of spotting. Which one is killing along. people? Uh, <laughs> not sure by number, but you can order them like a hamburger or something. Anyway, but the other part of chapter 50 that's so important is that I talk about Hillary's increasing cognitive impairment. Now remember, I turned this book in to the publisher March 15th. So I was saying- Long this, before this was a big issue. Long before anyone was So how do you know about, about that? Observing her over the years. And I just this morning was getting texts from a former Clinton insider who said, that he was really concerned about Hillary because mentally and physically, something is wrong with her. I talk about her cognitive impairment in here, and here's the deal. I'm not a, a doctor. You don't have to be a doctor. If your grandmother or father or someone in your family... Somebody's somebody having a convulsion about, at a restaurant, you go... you're carrying... That's about. a convulsion, like... Whoa, yeah, whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you would go to WebMD or Centers for Disease Control and look up the symptoms and figure out what's wrong, right? That's what well, I Somebody's did. having a convulsion, you see it. Well, exactly. But that's what I did. I list the symptoms of cognitive impairment from the Centers for Disease Control website. And then I say, here's what Hillary So does. what does that you say about the elite that they would try to put someone with epileptic brain They tumors. had already gone too far with her. That's the problem. There is no going back. That's the Hold problem. Hold on. Skip the break. We'll meet Rob Dew live here. I want to have a few more minutes with you. I mean, listen, I was told by the Secret Service 
in Cleveland. They said in the next few weeks, it was a month, they took them, but we're going to get you info. They said, you got a special black ambulance. It's got lift gates. She's falling down every 20, 30 minutes. We don't know. We think it's a brain tumor. They won't tell us. It's getting worse. We don't know what's happening. And she'll look totally like hell when she's having convulsions and better the next day. So you, and I've had family that's had epilepsy. They're real bad one day and better after it. But with her, we talked to folks that are obviously hooked into what's happening in Maryland. The year she was in the hospital, reportedly brain surgeries. What is your info? You know, as a lawyer, as somebody that knew the Clintons, as somebody that studied all this, she has, she's really, you know, degenerating fast. Well, my doctorate is a Juris doctorate, so I can't speak as a medical doctor. No, I know, doctor. but this is a gut level, you're saying. But, but, but at a gut level, honestly, as I said in the book, sometimes I feel sorry for Hillary. I do. She has spent her whole life running for this office. This is the entire focus of her addiction. However, I do not admire it any more than I admire a drug addict who gets up in the middle of the night and comes to break in my house to steal jewelry or anything else to sell to fix his habit. She has sold the United States to fix her habit, her addiction for power and money. She, she was the she all. was the sellout the elites could find. That's right. To be the traitor. She's That's not right. she's she's special and she's so traitor. Well, she is, and she has made this clear in her writings and in her speeches all along. And I, I'm sure you know about the hospital room on the fourth floor at Chelsea's, apart, Chelsea's apartment. Let's talk about building. that. Well, what we know is that Chelsea lives in a building where each person owns the floor that they're on. A, and a on $10 the, million dollar facility. Right, and Chelsea doesn't care about money. So continue. She says. I wouldn't either if somebody were buying me a $10 million condo. Exactly. But on that same floor, there is a medical facility where they did $40,000 electrical and plumbing improvements. And I w and it was a, I don't know the name of it, some medical health care. No, it's come out. That, that's where she ran when she collapsed on September 11th. Right. And the, there. Yeah, and the woman who came out of the building was not surrounded by Secret Service or anyone else. Wasn't that interesting? And I'm sorry, from a female perspective, the woman who came out of the building weighed 20 pounds less than the woman who walked in. I'd love to get that weight reduction program, but I don't think so. Yeah, you're looking like you didn't know that. No, they said it was a body double. Uh, well, if, if Hillary walked out, where were the Secret Service people who are always around her? All around her. And then no, she has I mean, pneumonia. All I know is, I was told by the Secret Service, she's falling down every 30 minutes, and we have it on tape. They said, just go to her event. She's in a medical tent. She's like on death's doorstep or something. The word I have from high level, yeah. Dr. C. Pachenik and others, and he was like CIA section chief of stuff, you name it. Mm -hmm. She's got a big fat brain tumor. It's well, going back. I don't know what she has, but here's the thing. Whatever the, she took, how did she make it through those debates? She looked great. No, she looked like hell. Then suddenly yeah. she disappeared for a week. She was there. She looked yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought. Great compared to how she looked before. She looked great compared to the way she looked before. Now, she was scripted. It sounded like she was reading. Well, the word something. is full body blood transfusions do that. Of I, young people. I, I don't know. I'm saving my blood for someone else. Well, I got to say, uh, Dolly Kyle, Hillary, the other woman available, uh, a political memoir at WND.com. I want to thank you so much. I want to ask listeners to support us. We have 25% off on Knockout, our sleep aid, our nutraceuticals. We have a Hillary for President shirts that are limited edition. When, when these are gone, they're gone. We have Hillary lock her up, Gadsden flag style shirt made in America. That's about to sell out as well. But your purchases support the broadcast. We're selling Hillary for prison uh, bumper stickers to spread around and post everywhere. Just stick them on Democrat cards. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, uh, at cost, $117. We have Bowen Lave shirts, you name it. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Again, you've, you've, you've heard the call. You've followed it. You've done it. So it's war bonds. We've had a big effect thanks to you. You are the blood and guts of this whole operation, viewers and listeners. So... InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or cultural free, 888-253-3139. But at WND.com, Hillary, the other woman, forward by David P. Shippers, Chief Investigative Counsel for the Clinton Impeachment, a political memoir by Dolly Kyle. Dolly, thanks for coming to Austin. You're going to talk to Leanne for the news tonight. We're going to get you some lunch. Put on an airplane back to Arkansas, but I hope to meet you again in person. Well, thank you, and I don't like telling people where I'm going to be. <laughs> well, that's why you're going to New York tonight. Exactly. <laughs> and they're going to Mexico. <laughs> Thank you. I say where I was, but not where I'm going. Don't worry. They're not going to get you. <laughs> hey, you know the carrying the coal mine is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to die, and I want to live forever. I love my daughters and my son. Mm -hmm. But 
I just I have a responsibility to fight these people. It's very tiring. I know. So and, if they and, pull the trigger on me, I win. I'm not really worried. I agree. And it's like being it on the, the mission It takes the power field. from them. It takes the power, though. I don't, I don't care. It's like being on the mission field. Missioners die. It happens. But I have to do what I have to do. I have to do the right thing. That's it. I have to do the right thing. Listen, somebody's got to not roll over to these, these pushy people mm -hmm. who want to, like, hate us. And, then, and that's what I love. You're standing up to them. Any other points you want to make in the last 30 seconds? Think. At the end of this book, I say, I could have written an entire encyclopedia, but I have presented enough information to get thinking people thinking. That's all I'm asking. Think. Look at the information. Listen to what people are saying. You mean you didn't have sex use with that brain. woman, Monica Lewinsky? You, use your brain. All right. Well, Dolly Kyle Hillary, the other woman, thank you so much. We're going to hand the baton to... Okay. Rob Dew at the other studio. Rob Dew, take over. Thank you, Alex. <clears throat> that was an amazing interview. I think that was one of the best ones we've had here in this uh, studio, at least the last, I think, six months. Amazing. And uh, we're going to be doing another interview with Dolly Kyle with Leanne McAdoo. Uh, we're going to go film that in the, or tape that. And I don't know what the correct saying is anymore for that. Taping, filming, putting on memory discs. Back when I started, you put things on tape and you had tape. The end of the day that you could always count on that wouldn't get erased unless you erased over it. Now we have cards floating around and people erase over top of them and stuff like that. It gets crazy. Hey, I'm going to take your uh, phone calls, I think, coming up in the next segment. If we can uh, line up the phone call system. Is that cool if we do that? I didn't even talk to you about it, but 800-259-9231. also want to go over these WikiLeaks, um, more WikiLeaks coming up. And now, and they're saying in Google, WikiLeaks is the biggest trend. Nobody cares about these Donald Trump, uh, these women coming forward saying, oh, Donald Trump did this to me. Donald Trump did that to me. Nobody really cares. But this article here from The Federalist, it's on Drudge. It's red linked on Drudge in the center column. Vote fraud is real. Here's the proof. Data suggests millions of voter registrations are fraudulent or invalid. And that's enough to tip an election easily. Yeah, if you got 15 million people, what about 18 million people? There's In this article, they go over... 18 million invalid voter registrations on the books. And that's back in 2012 when the Pew Research Center did a report and they had found one in eight voter registrations are significantly inaccurate or no longer valid. And what do we see from James O'Keefe? He had one of his uh, one of his associates working for the Hillary Clinton campaign asking, hey, I uh, threw away some Donald Trump uh, voter registrations. Is that cool? They're Republicans. And the guy's like, yeah, man, that's cool. Um, you know, don't do it again. And we got this guy, uh, they interviewed one of these commissioners who said, oh, yeah, they bust people around. They go from poll site to poll site. I mean, but yet there's no voter fraud. And, and you ask Obama, he's like, what are you talking about? We're just going to have the DHS take over the elections because we got to we got to install Hillary because nobody's going to vote for. Her. What's funny is you look at these uh, rallies, nobody goes to the Bill Clinton rallies. They're small. Nobody really goes to the Hillary rallies. People love to go see Obama. They were crazy at this rally. And I got a text from somebody today that said they, they interrupted with the uh, uh, Bill Clinton is a rapist protest. And I'm waiting to see the video. So that was uh, Obama in Cleveland, Ohio today during that rally. If you've got your video, put it up on your YouTube. Send it to me, Rob D at Infowars.com. During this uh, three-minute break coming up, I'm going to go check my email if you have any. And, um, you know, let me know if you got any anything out there. Let's get back to this article. Voter fraud is real. Here's the proof. In Colorado, they found multiple instances of dead people attempting to vote. A woman named Sarah Sosa, who died in 2009, cast ballots in 2010, 11, 12, and 13. In Virginia, it was found that nearly 20 voter applications were turned in under the names of dead people. Well, that's only 20. That's not a big deal. And Right? Not a big deal. Uh, Texas, they, they have this thing called vote harvesting, where they procure signatures of, of people and then they harvest them, and then they go and turn them in and vote under their names. Crazy. So if looking at that Pew Research Center um, study back in 2012, back then it was one in eight were inaccurate. There's 146 million people registered to vote. So that's 18 million invalid voter registrations. 1.8 of those, 1.8 million of those are dead people. 2.75 million are registered in more than one state. But hey, Obama says, what are you talking about? Voter fraud's not a big deal. We're going to more at this and your calls, 800-259-9231. Let me know what you think of what's going on. What do you think of that interview with Dolly Cow? It was pretty amazing. Stay tuned for more. It's Rob Dew with Fourth Hour.
Those are the days when times were simpler, right? We were all young and we thought the government was here to help us. Or actually, Reagan warned us that the government was here to help us. That was the most frightening thing you'd ever hear. <sighs> but back then, what was the government doing? They were running drugs to, to aid rebels in South American countries. And, uh, eh, you know, you think that's all they've been doing? That's right. Hillary's no different. <clears throat> Here's an article from Steve Watson today. Trump, Hillary meets in secret with international banks to plot destruction of U.S. sovereignty. Donald Trump delivered a keynote speech slamming the mainstream media for being in bed with Hillary Clinton's campaign and highlighting that Hillary has been abusing her position to court globalist special interest for years. And that brings me, I'm going to go to Steve in Canada. He's a caller. I got a lot of callers lined up. So I'm going to go to, he wants to talk about the Bill Clinton rapist media spin since we're talking about <laughs> the corporate media is no longer involved in journalism. They're afraid to report these things. Steve, what are you hearing in Canada? Well, I actually, I just turned on my radio. I, I uh, got off from work and I was listening to the local news and they talked about how there was this uh, rally with uh, Obama and you know, how there was someone screaming, Bill Clinton's a rapist. And, I, you know, I kind of got a chuckle out of it and was like, great. Good to see that someone's, uh, you know, out doing the cause. But then, right after they finished saying that, they also proceeded to say that that person was there paid. So just wanted to give you yeah. guys a little bit of a uh, scoop on what the Canadian media is uh, spinning on that. Yeah, uh, Rachel Maddow, I think, said the same thing. That this isn't grassroots. This is being funded by the Republican Party. It's not being funded by the Republican Party. Um, Alex Jones called for people, if they want to go out and do this, that he would pay them after the fact. If they got, we have to see the video. It has to be live because then they can't censor it. And that doesn't mean on your cell phone. That means live media going out to people because they're, they're holding all these events. These are all live. They're being streamed live. They're being televised live. And so when you get down and do that, you're able to break the conditioning, the paradigm. You're able to break people from their trance because it's not some, It's not like we're watching Obama speak. And all of a sudden, somebody or there was one of this couple that jumped out and they had made their Bill Clinton as a rapist shirts. And they ripped them off and started showing everybody and screaming it. At first, I think the guy did it and then the girl did it. Awesome. You know, breaking the conditioning. It could be anything, though. It could be in the Fed. What if we had people doing that in the Fed? Well, after this campaign's over, you know, we really got to look at what the Federal Reserve is doing because um, I think it just came out. Yeah, this is from Business Insider. Red alert, get ready for severe fall in the stock market, HSBC says. So the technical analysis team has thrown up the ultimate warning signal in a note to clients released Wednesday. Murray Gunn. Head technical analysis analyst for HSBC said there's a red alert. So there's an imminent, imminent sell off of stock. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to block that. Um, and they call it the Elliott Wave principle alternating patterns in the stock market to disconcern investors' behavior. I don't know. I'm not into that. I don't put my money in the stock market because it's a fake, it's a rigged system. It's like a casino, it literally, is a casino where the house always wins and the house is giant insider bankers and billionaires who uh, fund the market and then the gov government props it up. Steve, thanks for calling. Thanks for giving us that tidbit of information. No, nobody's being paid to be there. They only get paid if they get on camera or if we hear them and it goes out live. It's the only way people get paid. And that contest is capped at $100,000 and hopefully pe people keep doing it after the $100,000 is met. So while we talk about Hillary and her collusion with the mainstream media, let's go to a report from John Bound about that very same subject. Let's go to it now. What is your guilty pleasure? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> are there that many? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the G-rated ones. No, I really can't. Years ago, if you were an attractive female, unfortunate enough to be within the circle of sexual predator Bill Clinton, you would eventually find yourself escorted to a hotel room by an Arkansas state trooper, where the former governor would meet you wearing nothing but a creepy smile demanding you perform a sex act on him. Just ask Paula Jones. She settled a case with Bill Clinton for the same reasons with an $850,000 payout. Other women 
women have come forward with identical stories. Here's an inebriated Bill Clinton during his 1992 presidential campaign groping a flight attendant. Bill Clinton on the same flight later exposed himself and grabbed flight attendant Christy Zercher's breasts after asking her to perform a sex act on him. She was later threatened by White House attorney Bruce Lindsay to keep quiet. That is the behavior that has been superimposed onto Donald Trump by the mainstream media. The woman at the center of that explosive tape Truly is now speaking out. Said, there is no room for objectification of women or anyone for that matter, not even in the locker room. Well, it's, it's a crime. I mean, I prosecuted sex crimes. That's a sexual assault, classic sexual assault. People go to jail for that. He wants Hillary Clinton to go to jail. Maybe he needs to go to jail. For sex Hillary Clinton is on the stage. Hillary Clinton is running for president, not her husband. Um, this makes sense. This is politically uh, incorrect what Donald Trump did. This is bringing a whole nother level, level of gutter. Yeah. That, that's rape culture, Kathy. You're blaming her. someone who succumbed to she, someone committing adultery on her. She was accused of facilitating it last night, and she was definitely Haley, and silent. you're wrong. She did not deny it. You, but you know why? Because it's effing ridiculous, did. dude. It's so ridiculous. Bill's secretive behavior continued until until Monica Lewinsky blew it wide open. All the while, Hillary Clinton served as an attack dog, threatening the victims, clearing the path on her and Bill's Luciferian Bonnie and Clyde Trojan horse to the upper echelons of power and wealth. Now all anyone has to do to be mind raped by the Clinton crime machine is to turn on any cable news network. Let's start with what people describe as Trump sort of hovering and lurking. The last 10 days could have been about nothing but emails. Nothing Nothing but negatives about Hillary Clinton, but there's Donald Trump. The use of propaganda is exploding after being legalized in 2013. While America slept, an amendment overturned the long-standing Smith-Munt Act of 1948 and the Foreign Relations Authorization Act of 1987, allowing for materials produced by the State Department and the Broadcasting Board of Governors to be released within U.S. borders. Michael Hastings of BuzzFeed.com put it this way. The new law would give sweeping powers to the State Department and Pentagon to push television, radio, newspaper, and social media on to the U.S. public. It removes the protection for Americans, says a Pentagon official who is concerned about the law. It removes oversight from the people who want to put out this information. There are no checks and balances. No one knows if the information is accurate, partially accurate, or entirely false. CNN's Jeff Zucker just ordered an all-out blackout on the reporting of Bill Clinton's illegitimate son. That's propaganda in a nutshell. True journalism should have zero bias. But in true dualistic fashion, the faceless people actually concerned about the future of the republic are the ones being attacked by the criminals running the show. This is the great thing about politics in America. It just, yeah, and it takes all kinds. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. The other guy's base is what I grew up in. You know, I'm basically your standard redneck. No doubt about it. The American consciousness might as well be in a Little Rock, Arkansas hotel room right now with Arkansas state troopers guarding the door while all the hopes and dreams of the American ideal are brutally raped inside by the Clinton crime machine, the Bush dynasty, and the descendants of the robber barons who continue to stalk and brainwash the good people of the United States with unyielding criminal intent. John Bound for Infowars.com. It is one of the great political phenomenons. The most powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Trump noted the latest WikiLeaks re revelations have outed even more collusion between the New York Times and Hillary. The emails reveal that Hillary is warned before the newspaper runs a story that could be negative towards her, and she has a chance to veto anything she likes. In addition, an email sent by Hillary's traveling press secretary, Nick Merrill, outlines how ha Maggie Haberman, a writer for Politico and the New York Times, helps tee up stories that are beneficial to Hillary Clinton. Now, just imagine if the corporate media is helping Hillary Clinton get into office by hiding stories that are negative towards her and teeing up stories that are beneficial towards her. What do you think they're going to do when she gets into office?
think they're going to stop? No, they're going to continue. Okay, it's just like when Fox News was doing this for Bush and people are like, look at the media covering for Bush. It's the same thing that's going to happen, but this time it's going to be times a million. You're going to have NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, all of them wrapping their little hands around your necks and putting evil lies on television. Let's go to Chris in Virginia. Let's talk about election fraud because that's the two pronged attack you're going to have. You got to have people. Screwing with the election, and then you have to have the media help covering it up. Go ahead, Chris. I'm here in Virginia, and I think uh, it's crazy how in Harrisonburg they got all these uh, dead voters signing up. And I think Virginia is going to be a big swing state for watching out for election fraud. So I hope that people will finally wake up and decide we don't want World War III. It's just as simple as that. Yeah. And the elephant in the room is you got two kinds of elite. You got the ones that want the money and you they want the power. But the ones above them, they believe in Satan. So they just want hell on earth because they think they're going to be gods in the new world. But what they don't understand is we're all going to die. Yeah, they think they're removed from it and, they, and, they, and they'll get away with it. And they'll be fine in their little area. They're not going to be fine. Anything happens, any type of Armageddon scenario, the first place people are going to go is they're going to go where they, they know where the rich people are because they've been stocking things up. And there is a lot of retired Special Forces people in this country. And they're, I don't know whose side they're on, but they're not going to be on the elite side. I know that. So thanks for calling, Chris. Let's go to James in Texas. Let's talk about Obama's executive order for the next 120 days. Go ahead, James. Hello. Um I just wanted to talk about uh, if everyone goes to the whitehouse.gov, the official website, and goes to the executive orders that I'm fishing out every day now. Um, just recently, in coordination with uh, he, he just did uh, just put out an executive order titled "Coordinating Efforts to Prepare the Nation for Space Weather Events." Now, I don't know oh. if you knew this, but a few days back. Um, there was some solar flares that uh, NASA deemed uh, credible threats to this, our power grids that could possibly shut down our uh, entire world's power for months at a time. Mm -hmm. So I was reading a little bit into this this little uh, thing that he signed, and in Section 4, uh, Subsection E, uh, Paragraph 2, it says, they uh, have the right to coordinate response and recovery from the effects of space weather events on critical infrastructure and the broader community. Now, that can be interpreted different ways, but to me, that sounds like they can implement martial law. What we're going to do is everything is the broader community. Yeah. The broader community has a curfew. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. And I love how it's just loosely worded like that, the broader community. Do they even put a definition for the broader community in there? Usually they put definitions for everything. No, they don't. They just go on to the next section, which is F. So, yeah, you know, it's, well, nothing's really described. Interestingly enough, you, you, you should be prepared if your power goes out. You should have a generator. Uh, you should have solar. Mm -hmm. I've got both. We actually, right now, we have the InfoWars solar base station power supply on sale now. It's 33% off. It is time to get prepared. If you don't have storable food, if you don't have water filtration, people, and I'm talking to everybody, not just you, James, everybody needs to get prepared. Everybody needs to get prepared because if the stock market comes uh, goes down and they want to uh, distract people, they might start another war. Um, some natural space disaster happens. Oh, nothing that we can see, but all of a sudden the power goes out across the United States, maybe on election day. You know, I think they're going to pull out all the stops at this point. So you got to be prepared so you can concentrate on what's going on around you, not worrying about gathering supplies. Uh, also, you got to be uh, to get to stay healthy. You got to get your sleep. So we have knockout sleep support, 25 percent off. It's a flash sale going on right now. And we're having our last run ever of Hillary for prison T-shirts. And we're giving them to you at cost at cost. So be sure to do that. And let's go to Philip in Arizona next. He actually wants to, he has a DNA force testimony. We didn't ask for anybody to call and talk about our products, but here's Philip. Philip, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to say that, well, I'm a first time caller and before I, I bought brain force and the iodine, the nation iodine, and I was satisfied with the results. And my father-in-law just recently had uh, hip surgery. So 
I turn him on to the cheaper. He, he doesn't make much money, so I turn him on to the bio P two two. Mm-hmm. I was reading on your website that it was a cheaper version of the DNA force, but it pretty much does the same thing. So we decided to buy him the DNA force recently, and he he recently started filling, started uh, having filling in his left foot, which he didn't have before. So I heard Alex mention that it regrows like nerves and it helps with uh, stuff like that. So I just wanted to say thank you. And you guys rock. I'll be wearing red um, this election day. So, yeah. Nakami red, so. freedom red, right? Yep, freedom That's red. It. Freedom red. And uh, oh, right now, as well, I'm uh, ordering the Bill Clinton red shirt and uh, <clears throat> uh, Hillary. Well, right now, I'm wearing my Hillary for prison shirt, and I'm ordering one for my wife right now. Well, right what, whatever you do, don't go to any of these rallies where they're broadcasting on live TV and shout out Bill Clinton as a rapist and get that on live TV and then win $5,000. Don't do that. Uh, whatever you do, don't do that. Our anniversary just, was just yesterday, so me and my wife are going on the 19th uh, the, uh, debate, and I'm, I will try my hardest to get on TV. With, uh, well, both of us, I'm going to try my, our hardest to get on with our, both of our shirts. Yeah. So, thank Br- you. Break the conditioning. You know, it's funny. One of the, I think the second guy, he had the sunglasses on in Vegas, and he's, he's talking about Bill Clinton as a rapist, one of the videos for playing. There, we got another shot, and you can see the guy interviewing him. And he's an NBC reporter, and I, I actually met him in um, Wisconsin when we were there. And... I could tell he's not a Trump supporter at all, so he probably does not like that. Nice guy, but, you know, he's working for the industry. So what, what do you say to that? Anyway, we're going to be back. I've, uh, I've got a video on microchipping, and I'll try to get to a couple more callers. i got Steve in Florida, Kevin in Mass. He says there's a highway sign hack that says Hillary for prison. I hope you have pictures of that, Kevin, and I hope you're sending them to us. We're going to try to get to you guys next. We've got one more segment of the fourth hour. This is Rob Dew, Infowars.com forward slash shows where you can watch it. But I've got two callers that I have to get to. So I think I'm going to go to these callers first. Let's go to Kevin and Mass. Let's talk about a hacked Hillary for prison sign. Go, Kevin. Hi. Um, I was scrolling through Facebook, and the local radio station that is near me in New Bedford, Massachusetts, they somebody took a picture of a sign on the on the highway that somebody must have hacked that says Hillary for prison. And it was locally in your area? Down the road. Yeah, it's like basically the town right next to me. Okay. Right on that. The highway goes through my city. So. All right. And there was another one further down the road that said vote for Trump. <laughs> and the state police, the state police are investigating it to see how or who did this. So maybe, I thought. Maybe they should investigate was, voter fraud in their area. Uh, hey, what's the name of the radio station? Uh, it's Fun 107. It's, uh, I believe it's located in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. All right. Excellent. Thank you for the update, Kevin. Let's go to Mark in Ohio. Uh, Mark, tell me your story. I'm looking at it right now. It says you're a contractor. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Hey. It's uh, good, to, good to finally get a chance to talk to you. Sure. I was uh, working for a graphics company here in Ohio, and we had to go to a company that's built manufactures trailers for for carnivals you know for elephant ears and all this stuff and when we got there we were told hey you know ignore these military guys and these other guys in the jackets it's a secret service we're doing this project for the president and what got me was they're building 13 blast proof they're like 10 by 30 or 24 boxes that roll up on Mack trucks and are being told to the guys who are manufacturing this, these things move around and go where the president goes. And me and my friend, the reason I was reluctant to talk about it was it's kind of a little scary topic, but on the other hand, it, it, why would a president who's leaving office be purchasing 13 containers that are designed to go on and off of uh, C-130s, and this whole contract is huge, and it's startling with all the hype, and I heard Alex say, you know, um, basically 
uh, um, oh gosh, uh, scorched earth. And when he said that, it, it just resonates with me that I don't believe with what I saw. I have images of it as well. Um, Good God. This guy's leaving. Yeah. I don't think he's leaving. I really don't, Rob. I can't put it together. I've tried to rationalize this. You guys were here in July and for the convention, and I wanted to get up there at that time to see you and, and say so you're, something you're, about you're it. You're in but, Ohio? Yes, I am. Wow. Yeah, you can send me and, the, send me the photos if you'd like. Uh, Rob D at Infowars dot com is my email. Um, and, and speaking of, go ahead. Oh, well, let me let me just say this one thing real quick because you, you said the number thirteen and it hit me. Next Wednesday on October nineteenth, we're going to be broadcasting live for thirteen hours. We're going to start at eleven a.m. and go to midnight. And this is the final showdown between Trump and Hillary. This is literally freedom versus tyranny. And uh, we're going to start at eleven, go to midnight. So it's going to be a long, long day and night going over this debate, plus covering all the other news, all the WikiLeaks we can't even get to. There's so many freaking WikiLeaks right now. Thank you, Assange, for putting those out. You can't run a 10-year reunion very well, but you can put out some good information. Thank you. And thank you to all those that called Mark. Please get in touch with me. I'd love to uh, have you on the nightly news to talk about this. This is incredible. Incredible time. Pray and help help yourself and help somebody else out there because we are fighting an info war. This is Rob Drew reporting for InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com forward slash show is where you can find the live show and the refeeds. Thanks for watching.